Hello to all fans of Naruto Lemon. I will post all Naruto Lemon Yaoi, Yuri, or Naruko Lemon stories only on the Boosty channel, because Uncle YouTube condemns this. Therefore, I invite everyone who wants Naruto Lemon content to my Boosty channel. Good luck. <laughs> Neru, be extremely careful. It seems to me that everything will not go as smoothly as we would like. I understood you. Why have you been silent all this time? I scanned the area. But that's not about that now. I think you yourself understood that today everything will not go according to plan, keep this guy with you. Okay, then we'll be in touch. Why do I always find trouble? Ah, uh, dash, I said, running my hand through my hair, ruffling it. There was a quiet laugh from my partner. Haha, it would be boring otherwise, wouldn't it? And you, no problem, are no longer you at all. He said, embarrassedly straightening his hair. In some ways you are right. And to be more precise, he is right about everything. Suddenly the voices of children were heard not far from us, which meant that it was time to work. Ah, uh, several days of work. You yourself wanted the task. I wanted to. But let me be lazy a little, have a conscience. Nodding to each other, we took off and set off along the pre-designated path. I hope we can see the team and artiodactyls. I said while watching the fight of some genin. You have a chance to do this, so go to their aid immediately. They were attacked and they certainly weren't genins. I understand you, lead me. Wolf, let's move out immediately, follow me. I said and ran in the direction that Kurama was pointing to me. When we arrived at the place, we saw how Sasuke and Sakura were attacked by several people and were clearly pushing the children back. These are not people, puppets. W what? But their faces. Now is not the time to think about it. Help them. Taking Kurama's advice, I immediately took out my small katana and landed right in front of Sakura, blocking the blow from the puppet's sword. W what? She asked absurdly while I fought off the blows of the puppet. Get out of here. Run. Otherwise, you will be disqualified. Said the wolf, to which Sasuke nodded and took Sakura and left. Meanwhile, I took out a chakra conducting blade and directed chakra into it. In one swift motion, I cut the chakri strings above the puppet's head, causing it to fall limply to the floor. Ku, don't you know where the one who controls them is? I know, but it won't sound very good. He's right behind the tree to your right. But I don't feel any chakra from him. It's strange, but we need to check. While the wolf was dealing with the remaining puppets, I headed straight to that place. W what? That's all I could say, pressing the kunai to the puppet's throat. Having recovered, I cut his threads too. What the? A puppet controlling puppets? Can't trace further communication? No, and it's very strange. Wolf. Come here. I called my partner, examining the puppet's body. It's strange, his skin seems to be real, human. And the hair too. Perhaps this is a person, albeit dead. He was clearly embalmed. This is clearly not my thing. Wow. Who would have thought that they were so masterfully controlled through yet another puppet? Said the clearly surprised wolf. Have you already noticed that these are dead people? Yeah. But what interests me is this. Who is this puppet master and why would he kill two genin in such a sophisticated manner? I asked, not understanding the meaning of this attack. Maybe this is just a warning, and the real storm is just ahead? Well, judge for yourself, why send so many puppets to the genin, and especially control them through another puppet, the wolf thought while I was still looking at the doll. My gaze caught on a piece of paper peeking out of his pocket, I immediately took it out and opened it. The piece of paper turned out to be a note, with a lot of flowers and clouds drawn next to the words, and it could have been confused with a note from some cute child, if not for the text. Have you already appreciated our little gift? About. I'm sure you liked him, B. 
because your village spent so long looking for these poor unfortunate people. Wine, wine, how sad. What? Phew? Oh, don't worry, next time I'll bring more gifts like this. Hee <laughs> hee, don't be bored, Naroheim, we'll see each other very soon. Wait for me. With love, Tycho Dash. Little one, but this is really strange. This someone specially lured you here and made it so easy for you to win. I felt cold sweat running down my cheek, and the feeling of fear woke up again. This feeling is the same as in the dream. In a sense, you were right. I said this, trying not to stutter and not succumb to chilling fear. I slapped my cheeks trying to bring myself to my senses. A sharp pain in my cheeks made me drive away fear. So stop. I've never seen him, much less met him, so why am I afraid? And, in general, when have I ever been afraid of anything? What's there? The wolf asked, looking at the note, which I immediately squeezed in my hand. It says that he will return, and that these puppets were Kanoha Shinobi. And also the name of the attacker, Tycho, but this may well turn out to be an alias. I answered, keeping silent about the fact that the criminal clearly knows me and deliberately lured me here. We decided to immediately tell Tuchan about everything, so while the wolf was guarding the dolls, I reported the situation to Tuchan. After some time, the bodies were taken by another ANBU team for identification, and Wolf and I continued to patrol. The next day, Sasuke had already obtained the missing scroll, and he and Sakura went to the tower, and safely reached it on the third day. The mysterious puppets no longer attacked us, and we spent the rest of the patrol time quite calmly. At the end, we were still in the forest, informing the late teams about their loss, and directing them to the tower. Surprisingly, not too many teams took part this year, so they decided not to hold intermediate battles. Having met my teammates in the tower, I rushed at them with congratulations and offered to celebrate the successful completion of the second stage with a cup of ramen and unfortunately both refused. But the wolf immediately dragged me away and said that he definitely didn't like my team and that I should return to ANBU for the sake of his peace of mind. But I just laughed it off and went home, tired and hungry. Kakashi, seeing me, blurted out something to which I wanted to show him my beautiful middle finger, but I immediately changed my mind, because I was lazy, and simply fell asleep taking off my shoes, to Kurama's caustic comments. My morning began not with a cup of aromatic coffee, but with a fall on the cold floor. Wake up and shine. Someone's voice sang above my ear. Go and die. I hissed at the floor, and in response to my words, there was laughter. Mumbling something else at the floor, I lazily stretched and finally sat up, peering into one shameless face that threw me out of bed. You know, princesses are actually woken up in a slightly different way. I said with a straight face, while Kakashi was still laughing. Ew, porn from morning to earlier? Naru, does Minato-sensei even know what you're thinking about? I don't know what you're thinking about, but I meant coffee. Let's go, I need to get dressed. I mumbled, blushing desperately and trying to push him out of my room. I can help. He said, making me blush even more. But still leaving the room. Sighing, I began to clean myself up. Little girl, don't you think you're still too young for this crap? Scenes. Dressed in my favorite suit with a black top, I simply combed my hair and pinned up my bangs. After examining myself in the reflection, I nodded and left the room. There was no one in the kitchen except sandwiches lying lonely on the table, taking one of them, I took a bite and left the house heading towards my father's residence. After this, I definitely have to come in and eat some ramen. Along the way, people kept looking at me sideways, which I had long since become accustomed to. Entering the residence, along the way I greeted Shinobi I had known for a long time. Without knocking on the door, I entered my father's office. Good, I started to say, when I immediately became depressed when I saw strangers in the office, morning. Good, daughter. The father said somehow enthusiastically. Well, I looked at the guests, or more precisely, the Kazakage and his crazy family, the Kazakage limited himself to just a nod. By the way, he was now sitting on a chair opposite his father and together, apparently, 
they were looking at some kind of document. The dyed one and his sister clearly had their sights set on my life. However, Gara clearly doesn't want to be friends with me either. So, Hokage, let's continue our discussion. It's very beneficial for you to sign this contract, as our union will become even stronger. The Kazakage began to speak, and my father grimaced his face with displeasure. I slowly walked up to Tachan and stood next to his chair. My answer remained the same. I won't sign it. Tuchan refused, awakening my curiosity. As if by accident, I began to read the scroll that was lying on the table. Sure sure. A marriage contract that confirms the alliance between Kanoha and Suna and strengthens trade relations and the student exchange system of both academies. Yeah. Stop what? Me and Gara? I looked from the scroll to Gara. No, of course he's handsome, etc. But this is not how I imagined my marriage. What else needs to be added to the contract for you to finally sign it? Asked the clearly tired Kazakage. Serves you right, there's no point in bringing any nasty stuff for signature. The father was clearly thinking about something. I will sign this contract, but there is one very important condition. I give Gara two years. If during this time Naruto does not fall in love with him or agree to marry him, then the wedding is cancelled. Said the father, from which the Kazakage's face seemed to bloom, he agreed with this point and they signed the contract. You're angry? Asked my father while I was rereading the scroll. No, they still don't have a chance. Because he clearly doesn't know how to look after girls, and secondly, I will only marry someone like the second Hokage, Tobarama Senju. Although I doubt that someone as beautiful, smart and strong as him will ever be born again. And he should also be like you. I said proudly, hearing some umbu fall somewhere in the corner of the room. And my father smiled in response to my words. Without hesitation, I hugged him, and in this position we talked for some time and agreed that I should help Kakashi with training the guys. Kissing my father on the cheek goodbye, I hurried home to tell Kakashi this wonderful news. On the way, I managed to figure out where I should take Sakura, or more precisely, to the hospital under the care of Tsunade Bachan. Well, there is someone to take care of the topic. A month later. This month passed under Kakashi's vulgar jokes and eternal training with the topic. And not a single word from Jiraiya. For all these worries, jokes and training, I didn't even notice how the day of the exam came and here I was sitting next to Kakashi sleeping on my shoulder and for some reason a dissatisfied Shursue. Naruchan, you're not paying enough attention to me. Shursue said offendedly, causing me to smile condescendingly. Ignoring his words, I fixed my gaze on the arena where the judge was waiting for the signal to start the exam. My father sat next to the Kazakage and looked at all the shinobi and civilians there. Since the stage is held in an open arena, not only relatives of the participants or their friends gathered here, but also simply fans of the spectacle. Sure sway, you are becoming more capricious every year. Itachi said sitting down next to his cousin. I don't have a good feeling about something. Better keep your eyes open. Fine. If only everything would work out. So. First up, we have the fight between Sakura Haruno and Taigo Inasuk. I was brought out of my thoughts by the roar of the crowd and the judge's voice. I turned my attention to the arena where Sakura and her opponent had already entered. The judge gave the signal and the fight began. Sakura has just begun to learn from Tsunade Bachan, but progress in her movements is already clearly visible. But she is still inferior in skills to her opponent who apparently specializes in taijutsu. Despite all her efforts, Sakura still lost, but I'm sure that in a few years, she will become a master at this. A sharp prick of intuition made my body freeze in tension, and somewhere deep inside me, fear began to squirm around like snakes. I carefully peered into my surroundings, trying to find danger, when suddenly my attention was attracted by some strange translucent smoke that was located under the spectator seats. I immediately covered my mouth and nose with my palm so as not to inhale it, the awakened Kakashi and the Echihas followed my example. Some of the spectators slept soundly in their chairs, while others tried not to inhale the smoke. 
Without hesitation, I folded the seals and, with the help of the wind, dispersed the smoke in the arena and immediately went to my father to clarify the situation. The guy stayed to help those who fell asleep. When I found myself next to my father, he was already giving instructions to the shinobi. Naruto, be careful. I didn't have time to answer him, when a terrible sound was heard, reminiscent of the sound of hundreds of puppets moving, turning to the arena, I saw a strange group consisting of puppets in black cloaks, about a hundred of them, and a man about eighteen years old with gray hair gathered in a low ponytail and bright blue eyes, and he is dressed in the same black cloak, but with a print in the form of red clouds. On his chest was a pendant in the shape of a star. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Let's begin our exciting game. Said the man in the black cloak and looked straight into my eyes, causing a herd of goosebumps to run across my skin. After looking into my eyes for a few more moments, this man simply disappeared. He's not anywhere nearby, but don't relax. Yes. Are you kidding me? These words made my fear evaporate and look at their owner. Orochimaru himself appeared before me, making my jaw hit the floor. Once in my life I wanted to destroy the city. Kanoha. Well, no. Someone very smart has a plan for me. Where did the gorgon jellyfish come from? Tuchan asked, trying to attract the attention of a snake like a man. I stood and freaked out, along with the Kazakage. Oh, how rude. Orochimaru replied, causing my father's eye to twitch. Uncle, of course I apologize for interrupting your discussion, but what are you doing here? I asked, attracting the men's attention. Plan to attack you. But as you can see, these communists were ahead of me. Orochimaru was indignant, gesticulating wildly with his hands. Then maybe peace? I asked hesitantly, causing three furious glances to stare at me. Well, there, the enemy of my enemy, my friend? Sounds reasonable. I think we will sign the terms of our peace treaty after the attack. The snake answered, thinking about something of his own. Don't you need to ask me? Asked my father, but I didn't consider it necessary to answer. Tusan. Gara is missing. Only the Kazakage's daughter, who had nailed her, shouted. But this is already very bad news, because the tailed one inside him could easily destroy the village. What? When did he disappear? I asked. Just now, he just disappeared. She answered, clearly nervous. Tuchan, I'm going to look for him. I said, he just nodded. Be careful. Take it with you, through it you can contact me. Said Auric and gave me a small black snake, which immediately wrapped itself around my hand. Thank you. Without waiting for instructions, I went in search of Gara, afraid of being late. Can you help me find him? I'll help, but don't push yourself too hard. We haven't mastered a team of two yet. That's just what we'll try. It's not far from the academy, and you should hurry, because I can sense Shikaku's poisonous chakra. Listening to Kurama's instructions, I ran straight to the academy. Gara was found at the training ground closest to the academy. Gara himself seemed to be sleeping standing up while the sand swirled around him, driven by the poisonous chakra of the tailed beast. Ku, we need to help him somehow. Do you happen to know how to do this? I know, but I'll have to get into the mind of the schizo, anything can happen there. We'll break through. Then go up to him and take his hand, and then I'll do it myself. And we also need to act quickly. Without hesitation, I began to approach Gara, but as soon as I got a little closer to him, small grains of sand began to cut my skin like blades, but the cuts immediately healed under the influence of my regeneration. Ignoring the pain, I walked up to Gara and, taking his hand, leaned my forehead against his, closing my eyes. You can open your eyes. Karama said, opening my eyes, I saw him sitting next to me. Looking around, I noticed that we were in the middle of the desert. Somewhere in the distance, Shikaku's loud roar was heard, which made Karama grimace with displeasure. As I understand it, we have to find Gara and Shikaku, right? I asked. 
Yeah, we have to put Shikaku's brains back in place, if he even has them, of course. Kurama answered, heading towards the source of the sound, by the way, he is now much smaller than usual, a little smaller than me. I was torn from my thoughts by someone's loud sobs. Following the sound, I saw a little boy with red hair hugging a teddy bear, he was crying, clutching the toy in his hands. Who are you? He asked warily and looked straight into my eyes, from which my heart was ready to burst with sadness. I have already heard about his fate and it is several times worse than mine. Ignoring Karama's disapproving look, I walked up to the boy and silently extended my hand to him. W what? He asked, clearly not understanding what was happening. You're Gara, right? I asked, still holding my hand, while he clearly not understanding what was happening, stood and looked at her. From now on, I am the great and beautiful Naruto, your friend. So you'll never be alone again. I said, taking the boy's hand and squeezing it loosely in my palm. Be but I'm a monster? The boy asserted more than asked. No, you are never a monster. You are just a small and brave boy named Gara. For a few seconds, the boy still looked at our palms in disbelief, but after that a noticeable smile appeared on his lips. You're too kind, you know that this is just one of his memories. Kurama asked me as the boy disappeared like dew in the sun. We don't have time to calm all sorts of memories. I know, but I just couldn't pass by. I answered with a sigh, when suddenly a loud cry was heard somewhere very close, kill. The one tail continued to shout only this word, which seemed to be saturated with hatred and malice. It's even worse than I expected. I would look at you if you sat in a pot for several thousand years. He wasn't particularly intelligent anyway, and now there's this. Kurama said heading towards Shikaku's cage. I followed him, feeling sand sneaking into my shoes. Kill them. Kill. When we approached the cage, we were greeted with a loud squeal. The cage itself looked like a mountain with a cave, at the entrance of which there were bars. Shikaku did not stop yelling, which made my head hurt, I looked around in search of Gara, who was found sleeping on one of the sand dunes. You deal with this schizo, and I'll try to talk to the schizo more. Kurama said, sitting down not far from the bars. I went up to Gara and hit him on the cheek several times, trying to wake him up. Having muttered something under his breath with displeasure, he finally opened his eyes and immediately almost killed me with a spear made of sand. Okay, Gara, calm down. I'm here to help. I said, raising my hands up while lying on the hot sand, ready to dodge his blows. Why should I believe you? He asked me, clearly not really believing my words. Yes, it will be difficult. Well, did you see that red fleuridon fox? Well, he is the Nine Tails, and I am his Jinchuriki. That's why I want to help you. I said pointing my finger at Kurama. So, basically, there's some kind of indescribable chaos going on right now, and Shikaku has somehow taken partial control of your body. Therefore, you must capture it again, by suppressing the will of the One Tail. You can go for now. Well, Kurama and I will make sure that Shikaku doesn't bother you too much. After listening to me, he just looked at me with a chilling and blood-curdling gaze. Okay, but who is Shikaku? He asked without taking his eyes off me. Um. Well, it's like the one tail. I explained. Then, I rely on you. But if something goes wrong, he answered, turning his back to me and disappearing from his subconscious. Ku, what is there, is there progress? I asked coming closer to my friend. A little, but he still seems to be under some kind of hypnosis. Kurama said irritably. I wonder what will happen if you enter the cage. Will he kill me or not? Hey, Shikaku. Listen to me. I am Naruto, and I always achieve my goal, and now my goal is to become your friend. I proudly shouted, pointing my finger at him, a short silence hung in the desert. W what? The tailed ones shouted at the same time. Don't say what, but let's be friends. Naruto, where did you hit your head? Kurama asked and looked at me as if I were crazy. However, Shikaku's gaze was not too different. 
Is she crazy? One tail asked still, looking straight at me. And this despite the fact that he himself is not very normal. Those are the. And be friends with you after such words. So wait, did he just say something but kill? I shouted, surprised at the sudden growth of the tailed one's vocabulary. Naruto therapy was successful. Kurama said slapping his tails on the sand. By the way, do you remember your father's words? Well, here she is in person. Ku said pointing at me. Ha ha ha. Is that her? She probably won't even be able to kill an ant. Shikaku shouted, shaking my self-esteem. Actually, I'm very strong. I was indignant, but no one paid due attention to my words. We have to go, then argue. Ku said, to which I just snorted. Well then, Shu, see you later. Hey, little one. Who gave you permission to call me that? The offended tailed one shouted after us. When I opened my eyes, I was already at the training ground, standing next to me was none other than Gara, and next to us lay several broken puppets. Did you wake up? Gara said, looking into my eyes. I nodded and stood up from under the tree under which Gara must have planted me. Thank you for protecting me. I thanked Gara, knowing full well that he could easily leave me here. In response, he simply nodded. I think we should find our fathers. I said, and without waiting for an answer, I went to the arena. After a few seconds, Gara caught up with me and we continued on our way together. In complete silence, we arrived at the arena, or more precisely, at what was left of it. Tuchan, what happened here? I asked, landing next to him. Gara followed my example, looking around. The puppets turned out to be filled with explosives. They tore down the arena floor, leaving behind a message. My father explained, handing me a scroll, to which was attached a pendant with a country star. Didn't that guy in the raincoat with the clouds have one like that? When you said it, I immediately remembered it. And now, to be honest, I'm a little afraid to read what's written there. They demand that we transfer you, Itachi, and several other people associated with the heads of the clans into their custody. Said the father, trying not to show his anger. What was said broke out in a cold sweat. About. Narachan, you're already here. Orochimaru asked, tearing me away from the canvas with the message, well, and behind Orochimaru stood, he. Beautiful as a god, radiating an aura of perfection. Even the darkened eyeballs did not spoil it. E this? I asked stutteringly, not believing my eyes, instantly forgetting about the gloomy message. Tuchan, is this a dream? If so, then I don't want to wake up. I said shaking dad's hand. Your dream has come true, little one. Foo foo foo. I see you admire my resurrection technique. Said the satisfied snake, raising his nose to the sky. I didn't pay attention to him, keeping my eyes on the resurrected second Hokage, Tobarama Senju. Naruto, calm down a little. Tuchan asked me pleadingly. Which, however, had no effect, since I was ready to explode with joy. Fahaha. Poor Shursue and Kakashi, they simply don't stand a chance. Hello. Are you the second Hokage? I have admired you since childhood, could you become my mentor? I blurted out, grabbing the man's hand, which made him freak out, to put it mildly. God, just propose to him. If you surprise, then it's complete. But I'm still little. When I grow up, I'll become as beautiful as my mother, then I'll do it. Do you love older people? Someone's vaguely familiar voice said mockingly, looking back I saw none other than Kakashi. If this is so, then I need to return to my previous appearance as soon as possible. That's not the point at all. I began to justify myself, letting go of the man's hand and completely turning my attention to Kakashi. Is it true? Then what's the matter? This idiot asked in the same tone. Well. Wait, why should I answer? I asked, and he just shrugged his shoulders like, think for yourself. Ahem, said the voice of the second Hokage, whom I had forgotten, 
whose voice was somewhat reminiscent of the voice of the adult Kakashi. I refuse. He said, looking at me with coldness in his crimson eyes. Fine. But, I will persuade you until you agree. I said, giving my favorite smile. He paused for a second and let out an exhausted sigh. Naruto, could you help the doctors? They don't have enough hands. Dad asked after listening to the report on the wounded. Fine. I think my help will not be superfluous. Orochimaru said, following me to a group of doctors who were working hard. Thank you, help is never too much. I answered. To which he laughed in some strange way, bordering between madness and fun, laughter. Well, as they say, everyone has their own jokes. We joined a group of doctors from the Uzumaki clan. Everyone worked as hard as they could to help others. Even Orochimaru plunged headlong into work while giving orders to the nurses. I helped by sharing my chakra and helping carry the wounded, because, to be honest, I only know the basics of Irian Jutsu that my grandmother taught me. We finished close to midnight, having placed all the victims in the hospital. The explosion injured many civilians who did not have time to hide in the bunker. Some of them, seeing me, rushed to other doctors. Having finished with everything, I didn't even notice how I fell asleep in Akashi's office. The morning began, to my great surprise, not with the fall to the floor, but with the quiet obscenities of Arosanan coming from the first floor. I woke up in my crib, although I clearly remember falling asleep on one of the sofas in the hospital. Where are you crawling, you viper? I was brought to my senses by another cry from Arosanan, and it was he who told me that I was too noisy. Having examined myself, I realized that I was wearing pajamas with a cute little fox on the t-shirt. God, I hope it was Tachan or Tsunade who changed me, but God forbid Kakashi. Having put on a robe, I decided to check what was happening below. Having gone downstairs and not seeing anyone there, I went out into the street, grabbing a frying pan, just in case, just in case, as a fireman. In a beautiful flower bed in front of the house, two idiot Sanans decided to start a showdown, thereby destroying all my beautiful flowers. I felt a wreath swell on my forehead, and my hand squeezed the handle of the frying pan almost to the point of a crack. The hair slowly but surely began to rise up. Orochimaru, apparently noticing my thirst for blood, froze in place and simply stared at me. At the same time, my beloved godfather, without paying the slightest attention to me, was preparing to summon a giant toad, thereby deciding to finish off my poor flowers. Ignoring the look of the snake Sanin, I took good aim and with one powerful throw sent Aero Sanin into a long, long flight. For what? The godfather shouted in flight while I looked at the deceased flowers. I won't plant them anymore, may my mother forgive me, but this is clearly not my thing. Fufu. Good morning. Greeted the finally revived Orochimaru. There is never a good morning. What have you done here? I asked. Jiraiya, I decided to warm up a little and at the same time he wanted to clean my face, but thanks to you, the fight didn't happen. Answered the scientist, imposingly entering the house and examining its furnishings, as if checking if everything was in place. I followed him without closing the door, knowing that Arosanan would return in about five minutes. By the way, Orochimaru, do you know how long I slept? About. Exactly. Tobarama. I didn't dream about him, did you really resurrect him? Please say yes. I started chattering, remembering my idol. And for some reason, remembering Sakura and Ino, I hope I'm not like them. You slept for about three days, and no, you didn't dream. He answered, sitting down at the table. Without hesitation, I started making tea without asking the opinion of the uninvited guest. I wanted to ask you about something. I began to say, putting two cups of tea on the table, and he nodded at my words, stirring the tea in his cup. That organization that attacked us three days ago, what do you know about them? Actually, not much, they appear too rarely and disappear without leaving a trace, the attack three days ago is an exception. They had never done this before, preferring to act quietly and unnoticed. Their ideals are quite peculiar. 
although it's not for me to judge them. As far as I know, they dream of creating a unified country in which there are no wars and everyone is equal, plus one of them is clearly interested in you, confirmation of this is the pendant left by that guy. Apparently they put on this show for you too. Sanon's words made me think. If they want a peaceful country where everyone is equal, then why do they need people who in the future can become heads of clans? Perhaps they want to bookmark them or simply instill their ideals in them, so that later with their help they can gain power in the clan and spread their ideas among shinobi and other people. In fact, I came to the village not to destroy it, although to be honest I really wanted to kill the old man of the third, but to conclude a temporary truce with the fourth. I don't really like their ideology. A society where peace reigns and there are no conflicts. This is some kind of too utopian idea, plus they don't really like science. Orochimaru continued his story at the end of his words. Shrugging his shoulders and still not daring to drink that liquid that I call tea. Honestly, I imagined you a little different, I started to say when he interrupted me. Let me guess, you thought of me as a mad scientist? Well, to be honest, that's what I am. It's not for nothing that I lived in exile, foo foo foo. At the end of his monologue, his strange laughter sounded, to which you get used to too quickly. Self-critical. I said, noticing that judging by the sounds, someone entered the house, and judging by the fallen frame, it was Erosanen. A second later, as if to confirm my words, the surprised godfather froze in the aisle. Erosanen. When did you return? I asked, rising from the chair and hugging my godfather, trying not to think about the fact that a couple of tens of minutes ago I threw a cast iron frying pan at him. H.I.A. And how can I be offended by you? He asked, placing his hand on my hair. But how could you so carelessly let into the house an enemy who five minutes ago became an ally? From Jiraiya's actions, I remembered that I was still in my pajamas. I'll be right back. I blurted out and rushed upstairs. Mentally hoping that they won't destroy the house. Having cleaned myself up, I made the bed and changed clothes. Without wasting time, I went down to the kitchen. Where I found Sanon talking with extremely serious expressions on their faces. Orochimaru turned his somewhat snake-like gaze on me. Oh, did I bother you? I asked, to which my godfather shook his head negatively. So, Erosanen, when did you return? I asked, noticing that they were not going to continue their conversation. Recently, just before you hit me with a frying pan. He answered, clearly offended by me for that incident. Well, you destroyed my flower bed. She answered calmly, which is why the godfather looked away. And in general, I want to take a walk so. Fufu, and Naruto-chan's character is clearly similar to Kushina's. Orochimaru said, getting up from his place and heading towards the exit. I think I'll stay and rest on the way, if you don't mind, of course. Jiraiya said stretching and making me smile. Yeah of course. The house is yours. I said and left the house without forgetting to put on my shoes. While I was exchanging a few words with Erosanen, Orochimaru disappeared from view. Ignoring this and trying not to look at the flower bed, I went to Ichiraku to have a snack. Along the way, I was also accompanied by needle sharp looks full of hatred. I will become Hokage, and then everyone will recognize me. Hello, Naruto-chan, where are you going? The voice of Shursue, smiling from ear to ear, pulled me out of my thoughts about my reign. Stopping in place, I just stood there and blinked my eyes. Hello. To Ichiraku, what are your fates here? I died. He just chuckled without hiding his big smile. Apparently my answer didn't surprise him at all. I? I have the day off today, so I'm just looking for something to do. He answered, taking me by the hand and leading me to my favorite restaurant. Already on the way to the establishment, I smelled the wonderful smell of ramen. Welcome. Naruto, are you as usual? The old man greeted when we sat down at the counter. Yeah. I answered joyfully, dying of impatience. I'll have the same thing. Answered my companion, still holding my hand. 
The old man saw this and began to tell me something about his first love and its beauty, thereby making me blush. Shursui just smiled, squeezing my hand in his large and warm palm, embarrassing me even more. Why are you holding hands here? Someone sang in my ear, hugging me from behind around the waist and resting his head on my shoulder. I recognized Kakashi in this slightly bassy and hoarse voice. There were almost imperceptible notes of anger in his voice. I tried to remove my hand, but Shursui only squeezed it tighter. I looked from Kakashi's hands, pressing me to him, to Shursui's hand, which was still squeezing mine. Both guys smiled with some kind of forced smile and looked at each other, at some point it seemed to me that lightning flew between them. Little girl, is it just me, or are they going to take you apart for souvenirs? Your relationship is better than any book. It's funny for you, but they're really going to tear me apart. Let me go. I want to eat. I screamed, unable to stand it any longer. After all, right in front of me was a bowl of delicious smelling ramen. Ha ha ha. Who would have thought that a triangle turned out to be a quadrilateral? And the winner will be ramen. It was as if the guys were shocked and both immediately let me go, to the sounds of Karama bursting with laughter. God. Ramen? Seriously? Kakashi said, sitting down next to me, while I was devouring this dish of the gods with all my might. That's what Naruto is all about. Shursui said laughing. Well, that's what it is, and I'm not going to change. Without noticing it, I finished a bowl of ramen, which, however, surprised no one. Naruto-chan, would you like to come to Makoto's for dinner? She asked me to tell you that she will be waiting for you at nine. Shursui said without taking his eyes off me, filled with warmth, he truly is not an ordinary Uchiha. Uchiha, he's also an Uchiha month. And a good Uchiha is a dead Uchiha. Don't forget these are the words of your Tobarama. And I honestly fully support him. It's not that bad. Yeah, I don't mind. Still, I haven't eaten her cooking for a long time. I said after paying for my lunch, despite the Echiha's protest. He didn't have time to answer me, because some dark-haired creature flew at him with a squeak. Ku, is it just me, or was she replaced? Where did her stupid humor and laziness go? Naruto, she's so distracted from the exam. Probably. This dark-haired creature turned out to be a girl slightly taller than Naruto, with long dark hair and green eyes. She was dressed in a green, eye-catching kimono and high-platform sandals, which made her taller than the girl. Looking at the girl, Naruto suddenly thought that her favorite yellow suit now seemed not so bright to her. Not paying any attention to the observers, she began to chirp something in Shursui's ear, in her extremely squeaky voice, sticking to his hand like chewing gum. The smile disappeared from the latter's face and a tortured expression appeared on his face. Lady, was it just me, or is there jealousy in your thoughts? What kind of jealousy, I don't understand what you're talking about. I am I, please let me go, the Echiha said pitifully, trying to unhook the girl from himself who clearly was not the first time to swoop down on him like this, and apparently she was not going to let him go. But, Shirkuan, I just found you. She drawled pitifully, not wanting to listen to the object of her sighing. Squeezing the guy's hand even tighter. It seems to me, or are we superfluous here? Kakashi whispered into the girl's ear, to which she nodded, blushing slightly. She was made to change her mind by the pitiful look of Shursui, who seemed about to cry. Sighing, she decided to help him after all, to get out of the fan's clutches. But before she could say a word, Kakashi took everything into his own hands. Well, we have to go, see you later. Have a great weekend. He said goodbye, smiling contentedly to himself. At the incomprehensible and pleading look of the Echiha, Naruto just shook her hands, saying that she herself didn't understand anything. While they were exchanging glances, Kakashi had already stood up from his usual place and pulled Naruto along with him. Shursui looked after them and came up with a plan for revenge on one gray-haired shinobi. Naruto simply looked at the back of Hataki, who was leading her to God knows where, and pondered the fate of one Uchiha. That's what this Uchiha needs. Believe me, dear, we will have a good laugh at his torment later. 
In this you are more right than ever. The main thing is that he doesn't start taking revenge later, otherwise these Achihas are somehow too greedy for revenge. Well, but there will be a reason to take revenge on him twice as much. Naruto, Orochimaru asked us to visit him, he wants to talk about the drug that made me like this. Kakashi said without letting go of the girl's hand, amazed at how small and warm her palm was. Eh? Okay, but first let's go to Tuchan. I need to talk to him about something. Naruto said as she caught up with the guy, not even thinking about removing her hand. Accompanied by unpleasant glances and constant whispers behind their backs, they reached the Hokage residence. Slowly they reached Minato's office, before entering, Kakashi released the girl's palm and knocked on the door. Naruto was the first to rush into the office hugging her father, who was swamped with work due to an attack during an exam. Without thinking, the Hokage hugged his daughter, lightly stroking her hair. Naruto, you're finally awake. Minato asserted more than asked, but the girl nodded anyway. The Hokage greeted his student with a nod, to which he responded in kind. Tuchan, I wanted to ask you something. The girl began hesitantly, but after a nod from her father, she continued in her usual tone. Well, why did you agree to cooperate with Orochimaru? There are a number of reasons for this. Firstly, despite his reputation, he is very useful in the field of medicine and science, secondly, he agreed to stop experimenting on people, and thirdly, he must report to the Hokage residence every week, reporting on how he spent it. He also has spies in the lair of those nuke mean that attacked us. As a plus, he promised to find out what was done to Kakashi and help him. Overall, it's incredibly useful. The man finished his explanation, still hugging his daughter. Well, this is understandable, I already found out Orochimaru's reasons for making contact. So now I roughly understand what is happening. Said the girl, thinking about something of his own. By the way, you may not know it yet, but Sasuke became a chunin. Said the Hokage waiting for Naruto's reaction. She batted her eyelashes several times, trying to digest the information received. After which the residence was shaken by the girl's loud scream. W-H what? How? When? While you were sleeping. And the Echiha family is waiting for us for dinner today, to celebrate this. So don't be late. Minato said, trying not to laugh at Naruto's surprised face. Yeah. I'll stop by Orochimaru on the way home. She said, turning her gaze to Kakashi. I almost forgot to say, I have a mission for your team. It relates directly to Kakashi's problem. Here is a scroll, Orochimaru will tell you a little more about this mission. By the way, he stayed at the Uzumaki clan hospital. The man said, handing Kakashi the scroll with the task. Understood. The guy said while Naruto let go of Minato and quietly backed away to the window. Intending to leave the room unnoticed. Who was the last rotten tomato? She shouted, jumping out of the window, which caused a quiet laugh from the Hokage and a sigh from Kakashi, but despite this, he hurried after the girl, not wanting to lose. And you're having so much fun, Minato said after them, resting his face in his hands and smiling peacefully. Hokage-sama, have you finished with the documents yet? Asked the secretary, looking into the office, to which the Hokage laughed torturedly. Meanwhile, Naruto ran across the rooftops towards the Uzumaki hospital, trying not to let Kakashi overtake her. He did not lag behind her a single step, wanting to prove his superiority. But then they were distracted by a vaguely familiar cry. This is the power of youth. The green man and his student joined them, causing Kakashi to almost fall off the roof. Yes, G.A.I. Sensei. His student shouted, thereby deafening everyone else. And now four shinobi were running to the race. All the shinobi they met on the way hurried to take refuge in the bunker, and the civilians only twisted their fingers at their temples. In the end, Naruto was the first to rush into the hospital, scaring everyone with the nurse, all red and breathing heavily. The others ran after her. Narukuen, your power of youth is simply enormous. Dai shouted to the entire hospital which is why all the nurses and doctors glanced displeasedly in his direction. 
Fu Fu Fu, are you having fun? Orochimaru asked approaching the group of four people. Well, you could say that. So it's a rotten tomato? Naruto asked, and then laughed at Kakashi's grimaced face. Come on, I need to talk to you about the mission and its meaning. Orochimaru said in an unusually serious voice, which made Naruto feel a threat looming towards her and her friend. Fine. She answered firmly, wanting to know the whole truth. The guy, seeing the girl's tension, sighed and put his hand on her shoulder, smiling with his only visible eye, wanting to calm her down. At his actions, Naruto herself blushed, not knowing why, but immediately felt all the anxiety disappear, replaced by calm and confidence that everything would be fine. Well, again, you're thinking about some kind of perversion. I hope I'm in the lead role there? Kakashi said in his usual sarcastic tone, making the girl blush even more and fight the urge to strangle him right on the spot. Watching this, Dai began to laugh with his loud and strange laugh, which was followed by his student, again attracting the displeased glances of the medical staff. Hmm. Let's go already. The girl cleared her throat and grabbed Kakashi by the hand, dragging him behind Orochimaru, who was slowly heading towards his temporary office. Guy shouted after them something about the power of youth and love, although after that the nurses lost their nerve, and they politely asked him to leave. Orochimaru's office turned out to be quite simple, only one table, a few chairs and shelves with papers that lay throughout the office. Let's start with the fact that the substance that hit Kakashi was my development. Orochimaru began his explanation, leaning on the table. But this is an unsuccessful experiment which I have already forgotten about. You should have already heard that I am looking for a way to become immortal. So this substance was supposed to somehow rewind a person's time without harming him. But something went wrong, and after use, the person's internal organs began to disintegrate. So far, Kakashi is not in danger, but after a year, the insides will begin to turn into nothing, slowly killing him. I have developed an antidote that stops the decay process, but cannot return it to its previous appearance. But there is one big thing. Why is there always this stupid, but, why can't everything be simpler? Naruto asked, feeling how cold it was inside from the understanding that one day Kakashi could begin to disintegrate, and they would not have time to save him for some reason. Kakashi felt the tension and fear coming from Naruto, who now resembled a bare wire, if you touched her, she would kill you inadvertently. The fact is that this substance is slightly different from what I created. This may be why its effect is weaker, but because of this I cannot be 100% sure whether the antidote will work. To make an antidote, I need herbs that grow exclusively in the land of tea. As you probably already know, I am not allowed to leave the villages. Therefore, I entrust the search for herbs to you and your team. Orochimaru finished. Naruto, meanwhile, was thinking about everything that was said above. Then we must leave as soon as possible. The girl said, to which Orochimaru only grinned, as if he knew in advance that everything would be like this. Kakashi suddenly felt like all the anxiety that had been circling around the girl was replaced by confidence, the confidence that she would save him. God, he's a man and he should protect her, and not the other way around. He thought, smiling tenderly, looking into her eyes in which the fire of determination burned, which flared up more and more with every second. Orochimaru, watching these strange children, realized one thing, the girl was too thick-skinned to notice the warm gaze directed at her. Although it wouldn't be interesting any other way. After saying goodbye to the Sanin, the two walked in silence, towards the Hokage's house. When they had already arrived at the house, the girl froze on the threshold, peering into the guy's only visible eye. I will save you. She spoke sharply, without looking away and starting to blush. You are very dear to me, so I must help you. Otherwise, how will I become Hokage without being able to save the person dear to me? She continued with a soft smile on her lips, which made the guy's eye widen in surprise. Which abruptly gave way to joy, childish joy. A moment later, the girl felt the guy's lips on her cheek, stupidly batting her eyelashes and blushing, she tried to understand what had just happened. Thank you, he said, standing opposite her with his mask down and smiling. 
At some point, the girl even thought that her heart stopped for a few moments, and then danced again in a frenzied rhythm. And W what was that? He asked, putting his hand to the place where his lips were just a few minutes ago. And what? Few? If you want, we can continue. He said, while his gentle smile of an angel was replaced by a malicious grin. And Naruto suddenly thought that she liked it this way even more. Ha ha ha. Button, don't you think you're still too small for this? Seems. Just as it seems. What kind of debauchery have you started here, little guys? Jiraiya asked, watching Naruto as red as a tomato. Don't worry, we haven't gotten to the contents of your books yet. Kakashi said, pulling his mask back. Jiraiya thought that it was much easier to talk to this kid before. Naruto, not paying attention to the men, disappeared into the house. Entering her room, she slid down the door. I wonder if it's legal to be that much like number two. And that's all you care about? And what? Huh. Nothing. The fox sighed heavily, fighting the urge to hit his head on something hard. You haven't forgotten about dinner with the Echihash yet, have you? He decided to change the topic of foxes, but without hearing an answer from his jailer, he realized that she had completely forgotten about it. Not wanting to admit her forgetfulness. She began to look for one of her many kimonos. Ku, yellow, or red? Anything. But red is better. Enough I am going to sleep. The fox answered reluctantly, pretending that he didn't care and was generally beneath his fox dignity. Laughing at her friend's behavior, she nevertheless listened to his advice and put on a red kimono, wraparound, mid-thigh length. The fabric of which is decorated with black embroidery and the monum of the Uzumaki clan on the sleeve. And on her legs, black stockings that went just above the knee. After twirling in front of the mirror, she decided to leave her hair down. Looking at the time, she decided that she still had time to read one of the scrolls of the Uzumaki clan. While reading, she didn't even notice how evening had come. She was distracted from this interesting activity by none other than Kakashi, with a blow to her long-suffering head with a book. I-T-E-T-E. -T -E. The girl whined, rubbing her bruised head. She looked up to see Kakashi grinning with an Ika Ika in his hand. You read it again. Not again, but again. He said, still smiling. Let's go, Minato-sensei is waiting for us. If we don't hurry up, we might end up with a pretty bad deal, although most likely only I will get it, the guy said sadly, grabbing Naruto's hand and dragging her to the exit of the room. The slightly stunned girl trailed behind him, noticing that he was in no hurry to let go of her hand. This will soon become a habit. Naruto addressed her personal schizophrenia. Don't get too used to it, otherwise your Uchiha will burn with jealousy. The fox answered her, laughing at the blushing girl. Nothing, he's not mine. She exclaimed, to which Kurama began to laugh even harder. Well, hormones are playing again. Said the guy, stopping in the middle of the stairs, turning to face her. If you want, I can make your fantasies come true, he said in a slightly hoarse voice, leaning towards Naruto, red as a lobster, getting closer and closer which is why the latter's heart threatened to pierce her ribs with its blows and gallop off into the distance. And when they were separated by a few measly centimeters, behind the back of Kakashi, who did not understand anything, Minato's frightening voice was heard. Kakashi Kuen, what are you doing here? The man's figure at that moment was emitting murderous ki, which seemed capable of killing Kakashi at that very moment. Pihahaha. If I were him, I would have already dug a hole for myself. But your sure sway has less competition. The tailed one laughed, shaking the girl's poor head with his laughter. This is funny for you, but the kid is really going to die, Naruto laughed with all the comedy of the moment. Minato-sensei, you misunderstood everything, Kakashi said somehow too doomedly, finally letting go of the girl. Daddy, you won't kill my future husband, will you? She said, embarrassedly covering her face with her hand, watching as Minato's face darkened even more, and Kakashi alternately blushed and turned pale. My school. Daughter, don't worry, daddy will be your husband. 
said the man, drawing the girl's attention to himself. Hokage-sama, how long will you stay there? Auntie is already tired of waiting. Said a joyful sure sway, but immediately froze in front of the stairs. What kind of movement do you have? Minato-sensei, we were in a hurry. Kakashi said nervously, trying to change the topic of conversation. Okay, but when we get back, we'll talk about this again. Minato said, moderating his murderous key. Well, Kakashi realized that today, he might lose his reproductive organ. Hi. The guy said doomedly, while Naruto skipped down the stairs, smiling like a cat that had eaten too much sour cream. Just don't forget that if your godfather cuts off something for your beloved, then you won't have children. Kurama sang sarcastically. Who told you that I would marry him? Or maybe I'll get myself a harem of this, well, this. Asked the blushing girl, approaching Shursue, who did not understand anything, but was still smiling stupidly. Did that panther really miss you? Naruto asked, elbowing the guy in the side and smiling sarcastically. Haha, very funny, Shursue said without a drop of laughter in his voice, blowing his cheeks offendedly. You are heartless, you left me alone with her. And she, if only you knew it, almost deprived me of my poor virginity, he continued when Kakashi also joined them, and Minato went away for a minute to get some documents. Apparently, she raped your brains, Kakashi sang sarcastically, to which the Echiha snorted angrily. Well, at least I have them, unlike some. Shursue retorted, copying his opponent's smile. Haha, let's not quarrel. Tried to calm the Naruto guys down. Okay, but then you have one wish as an apology. Shursue said, smiling from all angles, Kakashi, on the contrary, frowned. Naruto, let's hurry. The second and the Echihas are probably already tired of waiting for us. Kakashi said, distracting the girl's attention. Will the second be there? Then why are we still here? The girl screamed when she heard about her idol. Both guys sighed resignedly, realizing that they simply had no chance. You are ready? Minato asked the trio, to which the guys only nodded. And Naruto was torn with the desire to see the second as soon as possible. Without thinking twice, the girl, like her father, was transported to the house of the head of the Echihas, with the help of the god of thunder. Once again, the guy sighed in unison and followed the Namake's family. Finding herself in front of the door of the house, Naruto knocked on it without thinking twice. A few minutes later, quiet footsteps sounded and the door was opened by a sweetly smiling Makoto. You're finally here. We're already tired of waiting. She said, letting the guests into the house. In response to her greeting, Naruto smiled sweetly. Yes. Glad to meet you. Greeted the wife of Minato's friend, Kakashi limited himself to a simple nod of his head. Well, we've already stood out. Shursue said as he followed the others into the house. Following Makoto, they arrived at the spacious Uchiha living room. Sasuke was already sitting there with a sour face, and Sakura was glued to him. The second Hokage spoke with Fugaku about the situation in the village. Neru, honey, wipe your mouth. Kurama said sympathetically, watching his Jinchuriki who was drooling at the second Hokage. What? Are they really leaking? The girl began to panic, wiping her face, but the fox's laughter instantly brought her out of her panic state. Comedian. I really believed it. The girl screamed at her entire subconscious, disconnecting from reality for a few seconds. Long time no see. Fugaku greeted, thereby attracting Naruto's attention. Tobarama simply nodded. Ha ha. And it's true. Minato replied, smiling sweetly causing Sakura to immediately blush and loosen her steely grip, giving Sasuke the opportunity to sneak away and hide behind Naruto. Dobe, you're taking too long. He said, displeasedly examining his classmate who was right now drooling at the current Hokage. All complaints against Kakashi. And in general, you are a chunin, it shouldn't be difficult for you to run away from someone like Sakura. The girl said, looking at Sasuke, who looked several years older in a green vest. In general, a promotion suits you. HM. 
Hearing his friend's words, the guy involuntarily blushed and hastened to look away. What is he doing? The girl asked, sincerely, not understanding the boy's behavior. You could definitely use some of that pervert's books. Karama muttered exhaustedly, realizing that the girl was as far from romance as the stars from the earth. Has your wife really decided to cheat on me? Kakashi asked, approaching the girl from behind and hugging her shoulders. W what? Naruto asked to the surprised glances of those around her. I turned away for a second, and you're already making eye contact with someone? Do you like younger ones? The guy sang sarcastically. He was prevented from continuing by a kick from Shursue. Why are you running around here? And who is your wife? Asked a dissatisfied Shursue, ready to kill his opponent. Oh. Yes, we have an interesting show coming up here. Little one, I urgently need popcorn. Said the fox, observing this whole situation. Letting go of Naruto, Kakashi turned to face the Echiha. As soon as the girl freed herself from Kakashi's grasping hands, she immediately found herself next to a representative of the Senju clan. So have you thought about my proposal? She asked as the guys behind her almost killed each other with their looks. Guys, as I see it, you are impatient to lose something very important. Minato asked, smiling artificially sweetly. Both shuddered when they saw the menacing man. No way, Hokage-sama. They both said in one voice, not wanting to test the patience of their friend's father. Still no. Tobarama answered calmly, drawing attention to the girl who was shining just moments ago, but now seemed to have gone out. Arg. I'll think about it, the man continued, which made Naruto shine again. Thank you. Then can I just call you Tobarama? The girl asked, deciding to be a little impudent today. The second one already opened his mouth and wanted to refuse, but he saw pleading blue eyes, which for some reason vaguely resembled the eyes of his older brother. Although the shape and color were completely different, he felt something familiar in them, and these mood swings clearly reminded him of something. Fine. He finally said, realizing that despite the fact that they hardly knew each other, he would do everything under this gaze. Hooray! The girl shouted, throwing herself on the second's neck and hugging him with all her might, driving the latter into deep shock. However, the rest were not very different from the man. Especially Kakashi and Shursue, feeling like all their hopes were scattered like dust. You're not wasting time. What's next? Directly ask me to marry you? The fox mocked, but inside he was still rejoicing that his girlfriend began to find a common language with her idol. Although sometimes it seemed to him that there was no one with whom she could not get along. Sorry for being late. Itachi said and awkwardly scratched the back of his head. It's okay, I'm glad that you made it to the holiday. Said Fugako, inviting the heir to take a seat next to him. Meanwhile, Naruto settled comfortably in the second's arms, not at all embarrassed by this, unlike the latter. Minato mentally reviewed the list of people who would soon be castrated, smiling grimly. The guys, watching him, shuddered, realizing that they were most likely thinking about them. Everyone has already gathered, so let's sit down at the table. Mikoto called everyone, which made Naruto's eyes sparkle with an evil light. Oh great rakuto Sanin, it feels like you haven't been fed for a month. If you continue in the same spirit, you will soon overtake that chubby guy. And whose fault is it that I eat for two? The girl asked, but never received an answer. Remembering that she was still in the second's arms, she quickly jumped to the floor and headed to the table. When everyone took their seats, what is usually called a drinking party, began. Everyone drank, Kakashi and Shursue drank especially hard today, they drank together as they realized that now they had a common enemy. To everyone's surprise, even Itachi joined them, although he drank several times less. Minato and Fugaku decided to empty all the alcohol reserves in the house, although no, rather, the Echiha clan, to which Makoto looked angrily and prepared a plan for revenge. The second decided not to stand out and joined the drinking couple, which is why the drinking session took on even greater proportions. Naruto just drank juice and enjoyed Makoto's homemade food. Hey. Dobe. 
Sasuke called the girl in a whisper, sitting next to her. What do you want, team? I propose to go into oblivion. He said, to which Naruto nodded without hesitation, but immediately drew attention to Sakura, who was clearly not comfortable being here. Just let's take Sakura with us? She asked, using her pleading look. The guy had no choice, but to nod to his friend's request. The guys got up from the table and dragged Sakura, who did not understand anything, with them. They decided to stay in Sasuke's room, which almost made Haruno's nose bleed. And here the three of them are sitting on the carpet in the Echiha's room. Sasuke sat with a brick face, as did Naruto. Sakura simply blushed and eagerly looked at the room, afraid to miss something. There was somehow no topic for conversation, so an awkward silence hung in the room, which weighed heavily on two of their company. By the way, topic, I prepared a gift in honor of your promotion. Said the girl, remembering the scroll with the gift she had bought in advance. The guy's face finally perked up a little and he began to wait impatiently. Naruto decided not to pull the cat by the balls and unsealed the scroll. On the floor in front of her was a katana with an interestingly designed handle, black and red, and a small red tassel. And also one of the books in the Ika Ika series. At the sight of the katana, the guy's eyes sparkled, it seemed that he was about to burst with joy, but he quickly hid his emotions behind a mask of coldness. But, seeing the book, the guy looked at the girl in disbelief. Sakura looked at the book with interest, trying to remember where she had seen it. Come on, I know perfectly well that you read all these perverted books. This is the last book, so you understand, plus it is signed by Arasanan himself. Naruto said proudly, making the guy blush. What? So Sasuke Kuen is a pervert? Sakura screamed all red, staring at Sasuke with her eyes as round as saucers. Which made Naruto want to laugh hysterically. W.L., if you like this, then I don't mind, said an extremely embarrassed Sakura, which is why Naruto finally burst out. She neighed like a horse along with her tenant. Sasuke promised her cruel punishment with just one glance, making the poor girl laugh even harder. Am should I go out? Naruto asked trying her best not to laugh. Just try it, Dob. The evil guy said as he came up with a plan to protect his virginity. A brilliant idea came to my mind. Naruto said as she slammed her fist into her open palm. What kind of crazy idea came into your holy head this time, Adobe? Sasuke asked, afraid to imagine what this crazy woman had come up with this time. Give me an overnight stay. The girl shouted, jumping to her feet. I would really like to too, but my parents probably won't let me stay. Said Sakura, who suddenly became sad. To which the Echiha sighed with relief, thanking God. But Naruto wouldn't be Naruto if she didn't want to ruin someone's life. I can send a clone and he will ask your parents for permission. Okay? Naruto said smiling sweetly, thereby signing someone's death warrant and giving someone a ray of hope. It seemed to Sakura that now she was looking not at Naruto, who was infuriating her, but at an angel who had descended from heaven. Sasuke saw the diametrically opposite, namely a demon, although there is no king of hell himself, or rather a queen. Thank you. I owe you. Sakura sang as Naruto created a clone and sent it to the girl's house. No way. Naruto said, looking at Sasuke, who apparently decided to fall into deep depression. I'll go ask Makoto-san for permission. Fine. Sakura replied, rejoicing at the opportunity to beat alone with her beloved. Sasuke instantly froze and looked at Naruto in shock that she was going to leave him alone with this predator. I, I am with you. The boy shouted, jumping up from his seat. But Naruto immediately put on an angelic smile and replied. No. You should stay with Sakura, she will be lonely and uncomfortable alone. Sakura, looking at the blonde, thought that this was not just an angel, but the goddess herself. Sasuke seemed to be petrified and seemed to begin to disintegrate. Bringing these two together is one of the best ideas you've ever had. Said the fox, enjoying the boy's suffering. This is my mission number van. The girl answered, pleased with the praise of her red-haired friend. 
Naruto quickly slipped out of the room and headed towards Makoto. As she walked, her shadow clone dissipated and his memories passed to her. Sakuri's parents allowed her to stay overnight, wishing her luck. When the girl arrived at her destination, she saw that the drinking had just begun to gain momentum and that it was not going to end. Passing the drunkards, the girl approached the woman. Mikoto-san, can Sakura and I stay with you for the night? Naruto asked looking at the woman who immediately warmed up at the sight of her. Minato, hearing his daughter's words, perked up his ears. Yes, of course, you can sleep in Sasuke's room. He's got three futons in his closet, so you can go to bed already. Mikoto answered, stroking the girl's hair. Minato, having heard about where his beloved daughter was going to spend the night, could not help but come up with unnecessary things. In his fantasies, the girl sat in the corner crying and calling for him, while three of the Echiha, namely Itachi, Sasuke, and Shursue, advanced on her with burning eyes. I won't let you sleep with these wolves. Minato shouted, pointing at Itachi and Shursue, who were sitting and not catching up with what was happening. Remember, daughter, all men are wolves. W what? That's all Naruto asked, looking at her father with round, saucer-like eyes. Do you have something against my boys? Fugako asked while the others were in shock. You won't find better suitors than my sons and nephew anywhere. Look at the herds of girls running after them. But my Naruto is too innocent and beautiful for that. And in general, she says that she will become her daddy's wife. Minato began his tirade, which Fugako took as a challenge. While the men argued about their own things. Without thinking twice, the girl burst into the room where she found a beautiful picture. Sakura reached out for a kiss, while the almost dead boy tried to push her away. Well, I guess I'll go for a little more walk. Naruto said with a sly grin on her lips. No no no. Dobe, if you leave, I will die, but I will kill you. Sasuke shouted, stopping the comedian. Naruto snorted and closed the door and sat down next to the couple. Mikoto-san allowed it, and so did Sakura's parents. And by the way, they wished you good luck. Naruto said, while Sasuke was still trying to peel the fan off of him. She said that we can stay in your room, team. Also, will you give Sakura one of your t-shirts since she doesn't have pajamas? Saying these words, Naruto understood perfectly well that they would take revenge on her cruelly and tastefully. Sakura was thinking about setting up an altar for the girl. Oh okay. He said, preparing a plan for revenge. Then I'll go get the same t-shirt from Itachi as usual. Said the girl. It wasn't the first time she had unexpectedly stayed at the Echi house for the night, so Itachi gave her one of his t-shirts. Without waiting for an answer from the guy, she rose to her feet and went to Itachi's room. Every time she entered his room, she felt an extraordinary comfort filling her. And this time is no exception. His room is decorated simply, but tastefully. A bed by the window, next to a work desk and a shelf with scrolls and books, a closet against the wall, a black rug on the floor, which is incredibly pleasant to step on. And now she just stands and enjoys the atmosphere. I knew you would come here. Itachi said, standing in the doorway and leaning on the frame. At the same time, a pleasant smile played on his lips, which perfectly complemented the atmosphere of the room. He <laughs> he. I think this has already become a habit, or just an addiction. Naruto answered, without stopping to look at the room in which nothing had changed at all, except that the scrolls had changed their position. Taking his eyes off the doorframe, Itachi began to approach the girl, which is why she began to retreat to the closet. What are you doing? Naruto asked, finding herself pressed to the surface. Itachi, not paying attention to her words, continued to close the distance. Finding himself almost right next to the girl, he put his hands on either side of her head, which caused her to blush. His body was only a couple of centimeters from hers, so she could smell the slight smell of alcohol coming from him. The guy looked straight into her eyes, which is why she felt like she was drowning in these dark pools. Men really are wolves. The guy whispered, leaning close to her ear, burning her delicate skin with his hot breath. A flock of goosebumps ran all over her body. 
She reflexively placed her hands on his chest, clutching his t-shirt. And right now you're in the lair of one of them. He continued, moving away and kissing Naruto on the corner of his lips. Naruto felt like she was about to explode from embarrassment and her heart was going to punch a hole in her chest. After letting go of the uncomprehending and embarrassed girl, the guy opened the closet and took out one of his black t-shirts and gave it to Naruto. After which he left, silently. As soon as the door closed, Naruto slid down the closet door, hiding her red face in the guy's t-shirt. Inhaling the pleasant aroma emanating from the t-shirt, she gradually calmed down. Having calmed down, she noticed that the t-shirt was different from the one she usually sleeps in. It was one of those t-shirts that Itachi wore most often, with the Echiha clan name on the back. The realization of this again made her blush. Deciding to quit soul-searching, the girl rose to her feet and walked on stiff legs, back to her teammates. The night promises to be long and will bring many more surprises. Returning to the room, she saw a terrible picture. The Echiha was lying on the floor and did not react to external factors. Sakura sat contentedly with herself in Sasuke's t-shirt, which barely reached her mid-thigh, a smug smile shone on her face, as if she wasn't wearing her beloved's t-shirt, but at least married him. Did she really change her clothes right here? The girl asked, to which the fox chuckled approvingly. I wonder how far she will go to seduce him? The fox asked, realizing that she was probably even ready to kill for this. Sasuke, as soon as he saw Naruto, froze and hurried to hide behind her back. Of course, I'm already a chunin, but life didn't prepare me for this, the guy complained. And anyway, why did it take you so long? Did something happen in Itachi's room? And nothing happened, I just lost track of time. A blushing Naruto blurted out sharply. Sasuke sensed a catch, after looking closely, he noticed a t-shirt in her hands. Do you usually sleep in this t-shirt? The Echiha asked, wanting to get to the bottom of the truth. Yes, so. Itachi gave it. The blonde said, blushing and replaying that situation in her head. Sasuke, watching her, wanted to immediately go to Itachi and ask what he had already done. Team, can you come out, I want to change clothes? Eh? Fine. After hesitating, he finally left the room, closing the door behind him. Under Sakura's gaze, she began to change her clothes. Little one, is it just me, or is your teammate a complete pervert? Asked the fox, yawning loudly. Do not you think? She answered, finally putting on a t-shirt that reached almost to her knees, and on the back was a mon of the Echiha clan. So do you like Itachi-san, Shursue-san, or Kakashi-sensei? Sakura asked, noticing that her friend had an image on her back, but she didn't. Eh? That's all the girl said, rapidly blushing. Huh? Haven't you ever thought about this? She asked Naruto, raising an eyebrow in surprise. In response, she only nodded negatively. How did you even realize that you liked the topic? Naruto asked sitting down opposite Sakura. Well, Sasuke Kuen is so wonderful. As soon as I saw him, I realized that I loved him. When I look at him, the whole world becomes a little better, and my heart threatens to burst out. The girl began to list and then Naruto realized that she didn't understand anything. The girl had already moved on to another topic, she was telling how beautiful Sasuke was, a genius, etc. Naruto was already starting to turn back from this monologue, Sasuke kuen this, Sasuke kuen that. Therefore, she had been sitting in her subconscious for a long time and playing the fool with Kurama, simultaneously ignoring the girl's monologue. Well, I lost again. Muttered the girl, throwing away the cards. Gambling is clearly not your thing said the fox, shrugging his shoulders. Oh, it's getting so boring here again. I already miss Madara and old man third in a bikini, the girl said, settling on her friend's tails and looking at the gloomy situation. Personally, I'm happy with everything, these Sharingans now give me nightmares. And Madara is in a bikini, brr. Please just leave it as it is. Karama asked, remembering the terrible situation that had recently reigned in the girl's subconscious. You better get out of here, 
otherwise that Sharingan will start giving you CPR. From the words of the lodger, Naruto immediately came out of her subconscious and began to examine the situation. Sakura worriedly peered into the Kunoichi's face, trying to understand what was wrong with her. Sasuke was not in the room. Eh? Sakura? Naruto asked as Sakura moved closer and closer. And when they were already sitting close together, the doors to the room swung open, and a surprised Sasuke froze in the passage, but Naruto heard something crack. It was probably his psyche. Kurama said confidently, while trying not to laugh. Honestly, I would also be freaked out if I saw my teammates getting ready to kiss. Sasuke Kuen? That's all Sakura asked as she continued to sit over Naruto. I won't bother you. The boy shouted, abruptly closing the doors. Well, quickly went back in. Naruto shouted, crawling out from under the girl. And sat down next to me, Dadabeo. There's that little word again. You've only just lost the habit. Said the irritated fox, who sincerely hated this word. Accepted. Understood. Has entered. The guy still shouted as he re-entered the room. Let's start with the fact that you understood everything wrong. Reading Arosanan's books is clearly not doing you any good. Naruto began, while both of her partners sat nearby and blushed from the understanding of what had happened. Sakura just looked at me. Understood? Yes sir. Sasuke muttered, turning away from the red-haired girl. Sakura looked at the floor. Let's go to bed. Naruto said confidently, while thinking about what else to do. Dobe, help me get the futons. Said the boy getting to his feet. The girl followed his example and stood up. Together, they took two futons out of the closet and laid them on the floor. H.M.? Dobe, did you see what Itachi gave you? Sasuke asked, peering at the pattern on the girl's back, as if wanting to check whether he really was there or just seemed to him. Yes. What's wrong with her? She asked without understanding the essence of the question. Oh yes. We need to decide who will sleep where. The girl sang sarcastically, wanting to put the couple together. Sasuke just shuddered, and Sakura again thanked God and the Hokage for the fact that Naruto was on their team, and not Samino. Let's rock, paper, scissors. Whoever wins sleeps on the bed. The guy said, ahead of Naruto, hoping that they would sleep on the floor together. He was not even frightened by castration, which Minato used to frighten his daughter's suitors. Fine. We play one round. Naruto said. Stone. Scissors. Paper. They shouted in unison. Naruto threw out the rock while Sakura and Sasuke threw out the scissors. Sakura actually blossomed before her eyes, in her thoughts thanking Naruto and thinking that she was the goddess of love, nothing less. It seemed to Sasuke that he was definitely in hell, where Naruto was sitting on the throne. Well then, I'll go to bed. She said jumping onto the bed, not paying attention to her friends, she began to look at Sasuke's room, which was almost an exact copy of Itachi's room. It's just that there wasn't the same atmosphere and comfort here. After half an hour, the guys finally lay down in their places. Sasuke tried his best to run away from the girl who was in love with him, but it was all in vain. And now she was lying almost close to him. And then Naruto suggested telling a few scary stories, or reading Jiraiya's book. But both options were quickly abandoned. Occasionally they could hear the drunken voices of adults. Even the second, although it would seem how a dead person can get drunk. When Sasuke and Sakura finally fell asleep listening to the blonde's funny stories, Naruto decided to go to the restroom. Having quietly gone about her business, she was about to return, when suddenly she found herself pressed against the wall. Naruto. Shursue chanted her name in a drunken voice, placing one of his hands on the girl's waist, and the other resting on the wall next to her head. I finally found you. What are you doing? Asked the blushing girl looking into the guy's cheerful eyes and inhaling the strong smell of alcohol. What is today, molestation day? Or did they all lose there at the same time? 
Kurama asked, sincerely worried about the safety of Naruto's virginity. You carry the Mon of the Echiha clan on your back, which means whoever managed to eat it. The guy sang, smiling contentedly, stroking the girl's back with his hand, which sent a herd of goosebumps across her skin. The guy began to slowly approach her lips. Naruto just closed her eyes in anticipation, soon his hot breath burned her neck, causing a pleasant shiver in her body. From the touch of his warm lips on her neck, she threw her head back, freeing up more space for touching. Beautiful. I want all of you, without a trace, he croaked excitedly, examining her reddened face and her blue eyes, as if covered with a veil. Having thoroughly enjoyed her face, he again fell to her neck. Biting the skin, he immediately ran his tongue over the red spots, as if apologizing. Under his caresses, she only pressed closer to him, unable to stand on her own. Feeling Naruto clinging trustingly to him in only a t-shirt, the guy was completely blown away and he pressed her against the wall, removing his other hand from the wall and began to explore her body, sometimes crawling under her t-shirt and running his hands along her thighs. The girl was shaking all over, breathing heavily and clutching his t-shirt. She felt a lump squeezing in her lower abdomen, and it was as if light current discharges were passing through her body. Naruto, your boss is coming straight here. The fox warned. The girl, with disobedient hands, pushed the guy away from her. And at the same moment, a vaguely familiar kunai flew next to his head. The guy immediately removed his hands and began to skid towards the window, as a few steps away from them stood none other than Minato, with Kakashi and Itachi standing behind him. Breathing heavily, the girl stood leaning against the wall and tried to calm down. I'll kill you. I'll grind it into powder, I won't even leave the bones. Minato sang, still smiling sweetly, starting to create a rasengan in his hand. The Hokage's heavy key seemed to make everyone in the clan's territory sick, because he was angry, very angry. Paying attention to his daughter's clothes, the man's aura became even heavier and more terrible. Daughter, who gave you this t-shirt? He asked, but Naruto smiled nervously, realizing that more than one Uchiha would die today. Itachi, realizing the danger of the situation, immediately retreated through the window, Shursue immediately followed his example. But the Hokage was also not a fool, so he immediately flew after them and the sound of a blow was heard. Kakashi simply walked up to the girl and hugged her. So you're still without underwear? He shouted, staring at Naruto's chest. Rapidly blushing, he realized that his nose was about to start bleeding. W what? Asked the red girl. W where are you looking? Tired of living? She asked, lightly hitting him on the chest with her fist. As I see it, you want me to finish what I started on the stairs? He asked sarcastically. After his words, all the heaviness on the girl's heart disappeared and she felt incredibly light. As if everything is as it should be. After giving Kakashi a quick kiss on the cheek, she easily slipped out of his embrace and went back to the room. Both of them felt warmer at that moment. After standing in place for a few more seconds, watching Naruto's back, the guy turned around and went to the rest of the drinking adults, hoping that Minato would kill those two. Returning to the room, Naruto immediately went to rest, deciding that that was enough adventure for today. But she never managed to fall asleep, since one not unknown Uchiha moved to her bed. Arguing his actions, by the fact that one Kunoichi climbed under his t-shirt and almost strangled him in her arms. As a result, they spent the entire night talking like this, none of them wanted to sleep, unlike Sakura, who was pawing at the pillow with all her might, clearly imagining one specific Uchiha in its place, which made him break out into a cold sweat several times. The voices of the tipsy adults died down by dawn, and our two conspirators decided to check their condition, and, if possible, laugh, the girl even took a marker with her. There were only men in the living room, Mikoto apparently went to bed, or she went to kill someone, we won't specify who exactly. The second was positioned on the floor in a star position, surrounded by empty sake bottles, Fugaku was sleeping on the table with a bottle in his hands. Kakashi slept more or less normally, lying on the floor with a small pillow under his head. Seeing the guy sleeping soundly, Naruto immediately took out a marker. 
Approaching the guy and trying to make as little noise as possible, she began writing on his forehead. Having finished writing, she began to admire her work while Sasuke was choking with laughter behind her. On Kakashi's cheeks, she painted two beautifully written phrases, virgin pervert and property of Naruto and you, and she also painted eyes on her eyelids. Sasuke clearly appreciated her efforts, mentally hoping that the marker was waterproof. The girl decided not to stop there and moved on to the next goal. To the second Hokage. She thought for a long time about what to write, and in the end Sasuke decided to take everything into his own hands. After thinking a little, he began to draw symbols on the face of the great Hokage. As a result, Tobirami had a beautiful inscription on his forehead, I am in love with Madara Uchiha. Even Kurama appreciated the joke, laughing sincerely, while Naruto grabbed a marker and wrote on the Kage's cheek, handsome and drew three stripes on each cheek, and several hearts on her forehead. And then it was the turn of the ladder, and then both began to think. In the end, they decided that they would just paint his face. There was a huge bruise under his eye, and a scar was drawn on his cheek. Snot was leaking from his nose, and his eyebrows were black and rough. The guys, satisfied with their work, went to rest. The morning at the estate of the head of the Echiha began cheerfully. At least Makoto and Naruto and Sasuke had fun. The woman sincerely laughed at the surprised men, who were not even aware of their appearance. With a hand trembling from laughter, she handed her husband a mirror, into which all three looked in turn. Tobarama, having examined the inscriptions on his face, immediately understood which one belonged to whom, so a plan for punishing the jokers began to ripen in his head, but for some reason he wanted to punish only the boy, and on the contrary, the girl wanted to praise her handsome for this and the stripes that reminded her so much own. Kakashi wanted to kill, knowing full well that all the inscriptions on his face were written by Naruto. Fugaku sat there like a stone, clearly thinking that he was more mutilated than anyone else. Unfortunately, the marker turned out to be not waterproof, so after some time, the artwork was erased. And somewhere at the same time, Shursue and Itachi returned, battered by life. Shursue returned with a broken arm and a couple of bruises. Itachi returned more or less intact, the only damage being a little hair cutting with the raisin and a few bruises. Shursue apologized to Naruto for a long time, even though she said that everything was fine. After breakfast everyone went home. Returning home, Naruto immediately changed into her usual suit and tied her hair into a ponytail. She was still feeling sleepy, because the night had not been quiet at all. She wasted no time and went to the Hokage residence. There, a task awaits her on which Kakashi's life depends. In the office, she found the Hokage, who was not in a very happy mood, but noticing his daughter, Minato softened his gaze. Good morning, dear. He said, putting the documents aside and smiling as if he wasn't the one who almost killed several Uchihas last night. Naruto, seeing the sudden change in her father's mood, was not at all surprised, she just walked up and hugged him. Kind. She said, still not letting go of her parents' embrace. You're here because of a mission, do I understand correctly? The man asked, stroking his daughter's hair and smiling kindly, she nodded without raising her head, enjoying the warmth of the hug. You will have to leave tomorrow, because we cannot take risks in this situation. You will also be accompanied by a detachment of ANBU, although only to the border, then they will go on their mission. Report the details to your teammates. Fine. I wanted to ask something else, about, the girl began to speak, but was interrupted by a knock on the door. Come in. The man said firmly, and Naruto, releasing his father, stood next to his chair. After the Hokage's words, a red-haired man entered the room. Good afternoon, Hokage-sama, Naruto Haim. The head gave you a message. Said the man, bowing his head before the head of the village. Having handed over the scroll with the message, the man bowed again and left the office. Minato wasted no time in unrolling the scroll and began reading. Naruto just stood nearby without disturbing her father. Naruto, something happened, the Hokage's voice cut through the resulting silence. The eldest son of the head of the Uzumaki clan has returned. 
so I'm not the heiress of the clan now? The girl asked with hope in her voice. Yes, now you won't need to study and live with them on a permanent basis. This is certainly pleasing, but it is a little suspicious. Said the man, rubbing the bridge of his nose. Naruto sincerely wanted to be happy about this news, but intuition, entwining her with its cold tentacles, whispered about a hidden threat, making her nervous. You are right. I guess I'll go tell the guys about the mission. Said the girl, kissing her father on the cheek and leaving the office through the window. Deciding to drop by Sakura first, the girl headed towards her house. The door was opened for her by Sakura's mother, who immediately dragged the girl into the kitchen, feeding her homemade cakes. What are you doing here? Sakura asked, running into the kitchen with her hair still wet. Quickly swallowing the cookie, she replied. We have a mission. We're leaving tomorrow. Oh, so fast? The woman asked, looking at her daughter. Yes, this is a very important mission, we must hurry. The blonde answered, getting up from the heated place. The mission may take a long time, so I recommend taking everything you need and being ready for tomorrow morning. Meet at 7 near the main gate. Agreed? Yeah, just what kind of mission is this? The girl asked, when Naruto was already heading towards the exit. Tomorrow I will tell you everything. See you. Naruto said goodbye and left the house. Sakura stood for a few more minutes, looking at the door, trying to understand what kind of mission this was. The only thing that made her happy about the long mission was Sasuke, with whom she would be able to spend more time and perhaps even fall in love with her. Yes I can. I will marry him and we will have ten, no twenty children and three hamsters. And also a dog. And, just like that, thinking about her future children and pets, she went to pack her things, sometimes laughing embarrassedly, clearly thinking about something not too decent. Naruto, meanwhile, was approaching the Echiha quarter. On the way to the head's house, she often stopped to talk with someone from the clan, most of them asked her about her betrothed. She just waved away such questions, to the laughter of Kurama. The door was opened to her by none other than the second Hokage, Tobarama Senju, with an extremely tortured expression on his face. Having let the girl into the house, he walked deeper into the room with a sad look. Naruto simply looked at his back, noticing the smallest details in the image of the idol. But his hair got the most attention, at some point, she was led by some unknown force and she touched his hair running through the silver strands with her thin fingers. In surprise, the man froze in place, his back relaxing due to the girl's manipulations. For some reason, he didn't want to leave at all, instead of worldwide discontent, a familiar feeling of comfort and tranquility came. After standing like that for a couple more minutes, he decided to speak, thereby destroying the momentary insanity. So what are we doing, young lady? Tobarama asked, in a voice soft and sweet as honey, slowly turning to Naruto, who was frozen and red as a lobster. Eh? W-L, I, uh, the girl began to say, but immediately drowned in the man's crimson eyes. Someone's cough tore them away from such an interesting activity. Turning their heads in the direction of the sound, they saw the evil Shursue, who seemed about to incinerate the second with a glance, who in turn looked at him with a contemptuous look. It's kind of hot today. Naruto said, noticing the tense situation. Which in general had no result. Well, I'll go, I guess. Sasuke is waiting for me there, and I forgot to tell him that yesterday, that is, today, he didn't turn off the iron. She chattered, retreating towards the stairs. However, no one ever heard her. Which only played into her hands and she, not paying attention to the men, ran off to Sasuke's room. Mother of God! What kind of passion is this? Naruto asked, closing the door behind her and sliding down it to the floor. Sasuke, who had previously been calmly reading a book, only arched his eyebrow in surprise. And where is my hello, Dobe? The guy asked while Naruto was in some kind of astral plane. I touched the hair of the second Hokage, she said, ignoring Sasuke's previous question. And it seems Shursue wants to kill him. What? 
Dob, can you live at least five minutes without incident? How did you manage to do this, and in front of Shursway? The guy asked, gesticulating wildly with his hands. No, stop, don't answer. Better tell me this, is your bad luck contagious? If yes, then you need to be isolated urgently. Themes? I can't believe I'm saying this, but he's absolutely right. About. And who is this that woke up here? Where have you been before? Couldn't you have warned me? You're the sensor we have here. Well, it's interesting to watch, maybe it'll get to you faster. So I want to die, but we have to go on a mission that Kakashi's life depends on, so I just have to erase my memory, Data Bayo. The girl began to chatter quickly, spreading out on the floor in the shape of a star. Code Red. Code Red. It's alive. Karama shouted upon hearing the hateful word. You were carried into the wrong jungle. Maybe you can tell me why you came and what kind of mission this is. Sasuke asked, sitting down next to Naruto and playing with her hair. We have a new mission, leaving tomorrow morning. Meet at 7 near the main gate. The mission may take a long time, so be prepared for this. The girl said, deciding to use Sasuke's lap as a pillow. If Sakura or Ino had seen us, I would already be dead. Naruto laughed, to which the guy responded with a slight smile. Suddenly, the door to the room opened, and an astonished Kakashi froze on the threshold. But now I'm going to die. Sasuke said gloomily, watching the changes on his sensei's face. Why does the situation repeat itself? Naruto asked with a blank expression on her face, looking at the ceiling. Chidori. Kakashi said quietly, and a cracking sound characteristic of this technique was heard. Sasuke wasted no time and retreated from the crime scene. Kakashi, deciding to kill one of his students, followed him and judging by the sounds outside the window, he hit a tree. Naruto remained lying on the floor, looking at the ceiling. What are you doing here? Itachi asked, frozen in the doorway. His long hair, to Naruto's surprise, was loose, and he was wearing only a poorly tied robe. But this already smacks of child molestation. Naruto said in an absolutely calm voice, while rapidly blushing. I'm not even sure who's seducing who here. Are you Itachi, or is he a log? Karama said thoughtfully, baring his teeth sarcastically. It seemed to me or you screwed up. The girl asked, preparing a plan for revenge. You have misunderstood it. Hmm, that's all the guy said. Embarrassed and hiding the view of his six-pack with his robe. Oh, this view is gone. Don't you think this is a little strange? Karama asked unexpectedly. What exactly? The fact that last night he didn't hesitate to pester you, but now he's embarrassed, because of his slightly open robe. Karama asked, making the girl blush even more. Naruto, are you okay? The guy asked, leaning towards the girl. Who am I? She said, keeping her poker face. Because of Naruto's words, Itachi's eyebrows immediately rose, expressing complete incomprehension of her words. Forget it, just forget it. Okay, then maybe you can explain to me why Shursui looks at the second Hokage as an enemy of the people and Kakashi is trying to kill my brother? A. Knows him, hormones are obviously acting up, transitional age is all the matter. She said, shrugging her shoulders. It is clear that nothing is clear. Said the Echiha, rubbing the bridge of his nose and thanking God for being in the shower all this time. Maybe we can indulge in some buns? Said the girl playfully twitching her eyebrows. If you mean Dango, then I don't mind. The guy asked, realizing that she most likely just wanted to further increase the chaos that was happening around her. Nope, a brilliant idea came to my mind. Simply the best. Naruto said enthusiastically, to which Itachi only sighed tiredly. No. No and no again. The guy said, thereby curbing his girlfriend's ardor. You have a mission tomorrow, can you just take it and not bring the Hokage to another nervous breakdown? But, Itachi just looked at her disapprovingly. Okay. I'll just go ahead and eat sweets all day. Well, this is not exactly what I wanted, 
but it's still better than another catch up with the ANBU, whose commander is you, if you accidentally forgot. Of course I didn't forget. And it's good for the guys to warm up from time to time. Naruto said finally sitting down. Okay, I guess I'll go pack my things and destroy my supplies of sweets. Ha, huh, the main thing is not to overdo it. The guy said, watching as Naruto climbed out through the window, and the ANBU habits had not gone away. Naruto headed straight home, knowing that he would greet her with pleasant silence and a mountain of sweets. And so it happened, only she met her home with a letter from Gara, who had already gone home. Having grabbed more sweets and a bottle of juice, the girl settled down on the sofa in the living room. After reading the letter, which consisted of only a couple of lines, she smiled, realizing that the guy had become a bit of a revelation and, judging by his handwriting, calmer than before. He wrote that he had already arrived home and that he had finally become a little closer to his family. Apparently they were still afraid of him, but he was no longer as aggressive as before, so it was just a matter of time before they got closer. Plus, he was no longer tormented by constant insomnia. After rereading her friend's letter several more times, the girl nevertheless put it aside and took the book in her hands. During that evening, she managed to gobble up the entire supply of sweets in the house, only she did it not alone, but with the help of Kakashi, who returned after catching up with Sasuke in an extremely playful mood. So I had to pacify him with carrots. That night, Minato never returned home, doing paperwork at work. Therefore, the guys decided to have an evening of devouring sweets, only they fell asleep after 10 minutes. They hadn't had a good morning since Naruto woke up in Kakashi's arms and nearly knocked out his teeth. A princess should wake up her prince with a gentle kiss, not a punch in the face. Kakashi said sadly, while the culprit of this incident apologized to him. I don't see the prince here. The girl muttered, intending to check how much time they had before meeting with the team. From what he saw, his eyes widened like saucers, the clock showed exactly 5 o'clock in the morning. Realizing that she had lost an extra hour of sleep, she fell onto the sofa and wrapped herself in a blanket. Okay, you lie down, and I'll take a shower. Said the guy. Getting up from the sofa. Or do you want to go together? Shulke dot you. Naruto shouted and threw a pillow at him, while rapidly blushing. How cruel. Kakashi said, theatrically wiping away a tear. To which Naruto simply rolled her eyes and crawled back under the covers. Come on, go. She said after the guy. Did you really want to keep him company? The fox asked sarcastically, thereby making Naruto blush. They didn't ask the perverted foxes. The girl answered, jumping off the sofa and heading to her room. In the room, she took a scroll with the necessary things, and a scroll with a list of the necessary herbs, as well as a bag with weapons. Taking clean clothes and a towel, she trudged into the spare bathroom. Having changed her clothes and tidied herself up, she slowly stomped into the kitchen to prepare breakfast. Kakashi was found in the kitchen, surprisingly without his favorite mask, he was sitting at the table and reading another book by Jiraiya. I thought Tuchan hit them all with a raisin gan. Naruto said as she took some eggs and bacon out of the refrigerator. Well, he really did that, but who said that I have one copy of each? He asked, smiling maliciously and watching the girl cook. You're incorrigible. Namike's the youngest side, turning over the scrambled eggs. But at the same time, you still tolerate me. Hataki retorted, fighting the urge to hug the girl and literally absorbing every movement of her graceful hands. But no one knows how long my limitless patience will last. She answered, grinning sarcastically and putting two plates on the table. You would make a good wife. He said, moving the plate closer to him. If you hadn't already beaten me after our night together, then you wouldn't have any value. What are you talking about, pervert? Naruto asked blushing. Which only brought a smile to the guy's face. I'd like to know that too. Question, who could it be? So what are your bets, gentlemen? Options. A. Minato. B. Orochimaru. C. Shursway. D. Taiko. 
D. Your option. I'd like to know that too, Tobarama said, leaning his shoulder on the door frame, while behind him Orochimaru chuckled disgustingly, bent over. Naruto's eyes sparkled at the sight of the Hokage, and she already forgot to think about Kakashi's joke. Boy, it seems to me that I simply have to unscrew your head. Said the second Hokage, releasing his deadly key. But Kakashi didn't even flinch under its influence. Well, I'm late, so I'll go somewhere far away, Kakashi said, pulling the mask over his face with lightning speed and disappearing into the shunshin. Well, well, don't be upset, my dear friend, their conversation has already been transferred to the fourth. So he will die anyway. And no one will touch your princess. Said the snake, patting the second on the shoulder, he only shrugged his shoulders, thereby throwing off Orochimaru's hand. Is it just me, or are you too bold? Tobarama asked, becoming even more gloomy. Orochimaru did not pay any attention to his words. Instead, he walked with a light gait to the table where Naruto was sitting. What are you actually doing here? She asked, putting the plate down. Tobarama, hearing the girl's words, calmed his raging key. I'm moving here. Tobarama said, still not moving. Your hahali will soon bring me to the grave, for the second time, by the way. Tell me, how could you, admiring me, stick these red-eyed people to you like that? Yes, it somehow came out on its own. What have these three already managed to do? The girl asked, narrowing her eyes. She knew very well how vindictive these were. Never mind. I never got along with the Echihas. This Itachi isn't that bad though. Said the second, and Naruto made a tick in her head to ask Sasuke about what happened in her absence. Naruto, be careful. One of my spies reported that one of this organization has a mission in the country of T. Do not trust anyone. Orochimaru said this while looking with his snake eyes into the blue pools of Naruto. Fine. She answered, nodding, but Tobarama shook his head, not understanding why the Jinchuriki would take such a risk by sending her to where one of her main enemies was. Naruto began to remember where that star pendant from Taiko was. Looking at her watch, the girl abruptly rose from her chair and ran upstairs to get her things. Quickly grabbing everything she needed, she said goodbye to the guests and ran to the meeting place. Mentally praying that these same guests would not destroy her house. Sasuke and Sakura were already waiting for her near the gate. A little further from them stood Minato, reading Kakashi while he shamefully lowered his eyes to the floor. And here I am, beautiful and unique said the girl, approaching her friends. Dobe. That's all Sasuke said and shook his head. Naruto, is it true that you and Kakashi-sensei slept together? Sakura asked, taking Naruto a little to the side. Yeah. Naruto said calmly, the sound of a fall was heard behind them, the girls turned around and saw Sasuke sitting on the ground, with eyes as round as saucers. Kakashi's eyes were even larger and Minato simply lowered his head, clearly holding back his anger. We just fell asleep on the sofa while eating sweets. W what? Sakura asked, while the other sighed in relief in unison. We were just sleeping. What were you thinking? Naruto asked, watching the boys blush. Naruto, the ANBU guys are already here. We can move out. Well, let's go said the girl, attracting the attention of everyone gathered. Walking up to her father, Naruto hugged him for a few seconds, hiding from the whole world. See you. See you later, take care of yourself and look after the guys. Try to return as early as possible. I'll be back before you get bored. Naruto said optimistically, finally letting go of her father. See you later, Mr. Hokage. Sasuke and Sakura said in one voice. Bye. Kakashi said as he walked out of the gate and waved goodbye. The trio of children wasted no time in following their under-sensei. The ANBU team slowly followed them, trying to keep their distance, they watched Naruto alone, catching her every smile. Naruto, you seem to promise that you would tell us about the mission on the way. Sakura reminded as soon as they walked away from the village. Naruto shrugged her shoulders and began her story. 
Well, in short, we need to get the ingredients for the antidote. And Kakashi needs this antidote to neutralize the drug that made him this way. Well, these ingredients need to be found in the land of tea. It's not too long to go there, but we can speed up the process a little and run through the trees. I don't mind, but can Sakura? Sasuke asked, looking closely at the girl. I don't mind either. I actually have good chakra control. Said the girl, trying to look stronger in the eyes of her lover. Well then, let's go. Kakashi asked, the trio just nodded. At the sensei's command, everyone began to run. But after a few hours, they had to take a break. While Sakura and the others were resting, Naruto decided to check if all her guys were in place. After scanning the area, she realized that everyone was there except the wolf. I think I'm a little overexerted, Sakura said, hinting that she might not be able to walk anymore. Naruto, without thinking twice, formed the summoning seals and bit her finger, thereby drawing blood. From the girl's hand, seals crawled across the ground. And then smoke appeared, and with it a large black fox. Hail child of prophecy. The fox greeted, wagging his tail at full speed. Hello. You can just call me Naruto, and by the way, you've grown up. I haven't visited you for a long time. Naruto said, noticing that the fox had become even more beautiful since the last meeting. Still would. I am your, no, that is, your main recruit fox. I just have to be the best. Kuyomi said proudly, trying to be better in the girl's eyes. Kuyomi, I have one request for you. Naruto said, noticing out of the corner of her eye how the others admired the beauty of the fox. Hey. Actually, I'm a hundred times more beautiful. Karama muttered. Of course, you are the most beautiful of all living on earth, of course, after Tobarama, and perhaps mom and dad, and also. Well, yes, let's add some Uchihas here. The fox said offendedly. I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. If you were a man, I would marry you. Although, why do I need such a grumpy and sarcastic husband? So that life would not be boring. And anyway, who needs a wife like you, and a button? Karama said laughing. What kind of request? I need to help my friend, she miscalculated her strength and cannot continue on her way. Could you give her a lift? Naruto asked, hoping for a positive answer, because they didn't have time to rest. Hmm, work as a loader. Kuyomi said, hinting that he was not too happy. Okay, what do you want in return? Naruto asked, realizing that she was most likely just scammed, because the little fox's eyes sparkled too suspiciously. Naruto, don't, I can go in about an hour. Sakura intervened, but was immediately ignored. I want you to come to us soon to study the Sanin's regime. Kuyomi said, proud of himself. Okay. Sakura, sit down. Said a joyful Naruto, pointing to the fox. Sakura hesitantly approached the fox and somehow climbed onto him. The main thing is, don't tear my ears off. Said the fox, jumping onto a tree branch. Having finally sorted out this little problem, everyone hit the road. They arrived in the land of tea in the late afternoon and stayed in a tea house. They settled down like this, Sakura with Naruto, and Sasuke with Kakashi. Naruto, where should we look for these same ingredients? Sakura asked, lying next to Naruto. Well, we can find most of them in one market, this is not a problem. But some of them can only be obtained from one traveling merchant. He constantly moves around the land of tea. The country of tea, as you may know, consists of two islands. My sources reported to me that he, or maybe she, has been traveling only on this island for a long time. Said the girl, keeping silent about the fact that she found this information in ANBU reports. How will we find this merchant, he doesn't stand still. That's why I said the mission might take longer. We will have to visit several points where he appears most often. And of course, collecting information, in this mission, he will help us more than ever. Naruto explained, hoping that they would be able to find this crazy merchant. The girls fell asleep without noticing it. In the morning, they quickly got ready and hit the road again. 
they had a short journey ahead to a traveling market, which was located not far from the place where they stayed for the night. The market was seething with life, people scurried back and forth, traders shouted their slogans. A mixture of aromas of different spices and medicinal herbs hovered around. The merchants were dressed in a variety of outfits. The market itself is located in an open area, counters, tents, and small carts with shelves are located in several rows. Wow, Sakura whispered admiringly, looking at the counters full of spices. Agree. Naruto supported her, looking for medicinal herb sellers in the rows of stalls. Noticing one of these, she immediately dragged her friend straight to it. They approached a small van with herbs. Behind the counter stood a pleasant woman of about sixty, pleasant in appearance, despite her age, she exuded elegance and femininity. She looked incredibly fragile, it seemed as soon as you touched her she would immediately crumble, her gray hair was pulled back into a low bun. She is dressed in a bright colorful dress. Hello my dear. How can I help you? The woman asked kindly, smiling tenderly at the company. Hello, we need to purchase several types of herbs. Naruto said as she took out a ceiling scroll and a list scroll. Hearing the name of the herbs, the woman began to rummage through the drawers, looking for the necessary herbs. Sorry, that's all I have. The woman said, handing Naruto a bundle of different herbs. It's okay, we knew we couldn't find everything here. Moreover, we are only missing two ingredients. Sakura replied, checking the list. Ah, you can find them at Hans, our local landmark. But he is always traveling and finding him is not so easy. The woman began to speak, resting her head on her hand. But just recently he was not far from here. Near Miss Yuki's tea house. Maybe if you hurry, you can find it not far from this place. But you should also know that he is not just a merchant. He was once the heir of some great family of ninjas, and if he does not want to see you, then you will never find him. Thank you very much for your help. Naruto said with a radiant smile, to which the woman responded in kind. Sorry? Are you also looking for Trader Hans? A woman asked, approaching Kakashi's team. Who you are? Kakashi asked, examining the woman standing in front of them for the presence of a weapon or something dangerous. After all, he is still the commander and sensei of this team. The woman looked absolutely normal, ordinary civilian clothes, brown hair just below her shoulders, and warm caramel eyes. No makeup on your face and a paper rose in your shirt pocket. The woman looked very uncomfortable under Kakashi's gaze and kept looking away, trying not to look at those she was addressing. My name is Akari. I also came here looking for this merchant. She said, but was interrupted by Naruto. Let's talk somewhere else. My nose will soon fall off from all these smells. Everyone decided to follow her example, and together they went outside the market, hiding in the shadow of one of the few trees. Well, we are listening to you. Kakashi said, sitting down near the roots of the tree. I need some herbs that only Hans sells. But finding it is extremely difficult, and sometimes even dangerous, since there is enmity between the clans of the islands. As far as I understand, you are a ninja, and can certainly withstand dangers. Therefore, I would like to hire you as security. Besides, you're also looking for Hans, so you win anyway. Having finished her long monologue, the girl exhaled and began to wait for an answer. We are now outside the village, applying for a mission will be extremely problematic. So I think we could accompany you just like that, anyway we are moving in the same direction. Kakashi said, thereby announcing the verdict. Naruto only nodded approvingly, while Sakura, trying to imitate her beloved, sat with a stony face as if at a Kage meeting. Hearing Kakashi's words, Ikari smiled gratefully. Thank you. She answered, still smiling. But Naruto was uneasy at heart from this smile, which seemed completely false. So we need to go to Miss Yuki's tea house. The road to it, taking into account the fact that Akari is coming with us, will take about two hours. Let's move out immediately, we need to make it before dark. Akari, do you have all your things with you? Kakashi asked, making a plan for their further actions. I have everything with me. 
she said and pointed to the backpack behind her. Kakashi nodded approvingly. Without wasting any time, they set off. Ikari surprisingly wasn't too tired and after a short break and a snack, they hit the road again. Towards evening, they reached the right place. And they settled in Miss Yuki's house. Kakashi and Sasuke, unfortunately for Sakura, were together again, while she was forced to spend the night with Naruto and Ikari. Noticing Ikari's absence during the night, Naruto went out to check if she was okay. A woman was found on a small terrace in front of the house, sitting and looking at the sky. Can't sleep? Naruto asked, sitting down next to her. Yes. Ikari answered, still smiling falsely. So I decided to look at the stars. I also love looking at them, they are so far from us, but this does not make them lose their attractiveness and brightness. Naruto began to think. The stars are somewhat reminiscent of the ideal of man, they are as far from us as he is. You love looking at the stars, don't you? Yes I love. And why? The girl asked, peering into the sky. Before, I couldn't see the stars every day. It always rained where I lived before, so seeing the stars was a real treat for us. When we are deprived of something, it begins to seem hundreds of times better to us. The woman said with a gentle smile, remembering something. Seeing this dreamy smile, exactly the same smile blossomed on Naruto's lips. This smile suits you much better. Naruto said, turning back to the sky. Hearing the girl's words. Ikari's eyes widened and stared at her. No one broke the resulting silence. After sitting like this for a few more minutes, they got up without saying a word and went to their room. On the way, everyone thought about their own. Upon arrival in the room, they noticed the absence of one pink miracle. Maybe she went to the toilet? Naruto asked hopefully, but Akari shrugged in response and said, think for yourself. They are raping. Kakashi shouted from his and Sasuke's room. Without wasting any time, Naruto burst into the guy's room and hung a little in surprise. Sasuke sits on the ceiling with the help of Chakra while Kakashi tried to peel off Sakura, who was trying to kiss him. I will not bother you. Naruto said with a malicious smile and was already leaving the room. Stand. Why won't you save your future husband from the clutches of a homewrecker? Kakashi croaked, reminding Naruto of her recent words. Sasuke choked on air from this turn of events and fell from the ceiling. This pleasant atmosphere was interrupted by the woman who owned the house. You go on, I'm interested to know what will happen to my mistress. She said, enjoying the performance. Sakura suddenly woke up and jumped away from Kakashi. He. Have I really cheated on my beloved Sasuke Kuen? She shouted, looking around. Now I will never be able to get married. Yes Kakashi, you must take responsibility. Sasuke saying, enjoying what was happening. He. But what about our love? Sakura asked, almost crying. Don't you love me anymore? No, Sakura, he loves you, and I love Naruto. Kakashi said sadly, spreading his hands. Naruto, meanwhile, resembled a ripe tomato. Oh, whose heart is going to pierce the chest now? I, I don't know who you're talking about. Ho ho. Know that I'm rooting for him. The fox laughed, making the girl almost smoke with embarrassment. W what? Sasuke asked, but there was no answer. Sakura, without wasting time, squeezed him in her arms, not allowing air to access her lungs. This is Santa Barbara you have here. Hmm. So everyone goes to their rooms. The married couple is in this room, and the rest are in another. Said the owner of the tea house. Naruto was still in deep shock. Sakura dragged Sasuke, who was just as shocked as Naruto. In the end, the girl came to her senses only when Sakura came through the door. Why are you standing there? Kakashi asked. Or maybe you want me to help you? And no, I myself, Dada Bayo. She said, terribly nervous. Kakashi just smiled at this reaction. Since we are a married couple, can we go over the contents of my favorite book? 
Kakashi asked approaching the bed on which the girl was lying covered with her head. They'll put you in jail, you idiot. Came from under the blanket. What are you thinking about so vulgarly? I just invited you to read a book with me. No, unless of course you want to test everything in practice, the guy was prevented from finishing by a pillow that flew straight into his face. Go to bed, alpha male. Naruto said without showing her face. Kakashi, having removed his mask, only smiled, touched by Naruto's embarrassment. Leaning down, he kissed her cheek through the blanket. The girl became quiet for a moment, listening to the guy's actions. At least take a pillow. He said and placed a pillow next to Naruto. As soon as she heard that he lay down on the bed, she timidly emerged from under the blanket, taking the pillow. She fell asleep quickly, but the dreams that came to her today seriously embarrassed her. She either dreamed that Shursue proposed to her and they had ten children, then she dreamed of Kakashi studying a book with her in practice, or of Itachi whispering embarrassing speeches in her ear. Little one, of course I understand everything, hormones are everything. But this is too much, to be honest, said the fox when the girl finally woke up. Yes, I'm shocked myself. She answered, looking blankly at the ceiling. Maybe this is a hint? Well, like, is it time to choose one? You may be right, but I really don't know, they are all very dear to me, and I love them. Should I not create a harem because of this? They will kill each other. The girl began her speech, descending into the subconscious, and settling on her friend's tales. I'll take it and marry you, even though you're such a malicious creature, but you have beautiful fur and you're definitely not going anywhere. Don't you care that there are a few foxes? Karama asked laughing. All races are submissive to love. The girl said abstrusely without looking up at Karama. Go already, smart guy, Kakashi has been calling you there for ten minutes. I'll go, I'll go. Naruto said reluctantly. What do you want? Naruto asked, fidgeting and trying to throw off the blanket. Kakashi, watching her even attempts, only sighed heavily and smiled gently, realizing that, despite everything, she still remains a child with the mind and abilities of an adult. Nothing, but they've already waited for us. The guy said, but the girl did not pay any attention to his words. After all, it was at that moment that memories of yesterday and the embarrassing dream returned to her little head. Hey! Are you even listening to me? Eh? Yes, of course I listen to you. She said, jumping out of bed. Ha ha, yes exactly. I need to get dressed. Okay. Kakashi said to Naruto's back, who had already flown out of the room. Once again, sighing heavily, he began to make the bed after the omnipresent girl. Meanwhile, she flew into their room with Sakura. The girls who were sitting there looked in fear at the loudly slammed door and the red Naruto. Um, good morning? Naruto said, trying to defuse the situation. Good, but apparently not for you, or is it the other way around? Sakura asked with a sly smile. Good morning. That's all Akari said, then returning to her business. Haha, <laughs> very funny. She probably almost raped the poor team herself, Naruto said sarcastically, which made Sakura puff indignantly, but did not deny. Because of which, Naruto once again felt sorry for Sasuke and prayed that he would not get pregnant from her. Sighing heavily, she took out a scroll with clean clothes and took out a yellow kimono and black leggings that reached her knees. Not embarrassed by the girls, Naruto began to change clothes. Sakura was no longer surprised by the openness of this person, examining the contents of the scroll with interest. Akari turned away a little embarrassed, trying not to look at the girl changing clothes. Finally getting dressed, the girl stretched like a cat. Well, I think we can move out? Naruto asked, to which the girls nodded in approval. Leaving the room, they went out onto the terrace, where Kakashi and Sasuke were already waiting for them. Sasuke looked depressed, and it felt like he hadn't slept at all that night. Dude, did you sleep at all today? Naruto asked, trying not to laugh at his exhausted appearance. What do you think, my virginity was at gunpoint all night? 
said the guy, sighing heavily and ruffling his hair. But what we're all concerned about is what's going on between you two. Okay, I admit it. I'll be honest, I'll marry, the girl began to say, while everyone was wary, preparing to hear the answer. For Karama, or the second. She said proudly, causing the jaws of everyone around her to say hello to the floor. No, wait a minute, I understand second Sama, but what does this red flea-covered rug have to do with it? And anyway, how did you come up with this? Kakashi asked tiredly massaging his temples. Well, Ku is always with me, helps me in battle, listens to my whining, is sarcastic, and in general, he's such a cutie. The girl began to list, causing both guys to almost facepalm their foreheads. My girl, I understand everything, of course, but I don't understand it. The fox was indignant. What on? Get married, if you forgot, then perhaps I'll remind you that I'm a little bit of a fox. Hey! Don't judge my feelings. I actually praise you. Um, I apologize for such an indiscreet question, but who is Karama? Sakura asked, giving up trying to remember someone with that name. This is, Naruto started to say, but Kakashi shamelessly interrupted her. This is a mutual friend of mine with Naruto from another village. The guy said calmly. Without giving away his lie. Yes, it is. Naruto confirmed. Sakura just frowned, clearly suspecting that she was being blatantly lied to. Ha ha ha, Akari laughed, you guys are funny. She continued, smiling sincerely, from this sight Naruto forgot about the topic of conversation and spontaneously hugged the girl. Everyone just gave the blonde surprised looks, as did Akari herself. Akari, it turns out, knows how to smile so sweetly. Naruto said, still hugging the girl. Well, it's time to go. She said, releasing Akari and setting off, not giving the guys time to recover. She's kind of strange, don't you think? Karama asked. There are a few, but we are all not without oddities. And intuition is silent. Naruto answered walking ahead of the group. What really worries me is this merchant. You can expect anything from him. You're right about that. Something tells me that it is not at all so simple, and it is not shown to everyone. The fox began to reason, at the same time scanning the area for enemies. Well, maybe we'll be lucky, and he'll consider us worthy? Naruto said, persistently looking at the ground under her feet. Why are you quiet? Kakashi asked, coming up to the girl and placing his hand on her shoulder. Yes, I was thinking about something. Do not pay attention. Hearing Naruto's answer, Kakashi only frowned. But a moment later, a truly cunning smile blossomed on his face. Taking off his mask, he kissed the girl, who was still interrupting in her thoughts, on the corner of her lips. When Naruto's confused gaze fell on his face, without thinking twice, he stuck out his brick-faced tongue at her. Unable to move, she blushed either from anger or from embarrassment. You think too much, but since you decided to start doing this, then think about me. Kakashi sang sarcastically, pulling the mask over his face. Kakashi. You're in deep trouble. Said the equally shocked Sasuke, seeing Naruto's hair rise slowly but surely. Kakashi, seeing the girl's condition, without thinking twice, rushed from the crime scene. Naruto immediately ran after him. And again the circus, said Sakura, watching this couple. Although if Sasuke Kuen wants, then I can do the same. She said, blushing deeply. I refuse. Sasuke answered instantly with a stony face. Akari just smiled faintly, watching the kids full of life, remembering the moments of her youth. This couple has already disappeared somewhere. Sasuke said pessimistically. Let's go further, they will catch up with us later. Oh, okay. Sakura answered, and the three of them set off on the road. Meanwhile, Naruto had already forgotten about the purpose for which she was pursuing Kakashi, enjoying catching up like this, not embarrassed to laugh throughout the whole neighborhood. I'm tired. Said Kakashi fell on the grass next to some tree. Me too. The girl answered, falling next to him. By the way, 
Do you know that you are still an idiot? She asked chuckling. Young lady, I was actually called an outstanding genius. The guy said proudly, closing his eyes and showing his superiority with all his appearance. Yeah, yeah, a genius at speed reading perverted books? She asked, smiling contentedly. And this too. He said. You read them too, if you haven't forgotten. I read their censored versions, so I'm not as perverted as some people. Oh, then I have to read them to you in full. From the guy's words, the girl's face turned red. Wow, she blushed so much, but I'm suggesting you just read together, and which one of us is the pervert? He said, taking off his mask and looking into the girl's eyes, thereby making her blush even more. I won't let you die. I may be selfish, but you have to live. She said with a serious expression. I know, by the way, my memory has returned to me. The guy said, watching Naruto's reaction. She jumped up from the ground and peering into his face said. How long ago? A week has already passed. He answered. But then why did your character remain the same? Haha, I don't understand anything, Dada Bayo. She asked, running her hands through her hair and vigorously massaging her scalp. You don't like the current me? The guy asked, still with the same smile on his face. No, quite the opposite. She said frozen. Then I don't see any problems, especially since I like it better this way. It reminded me of reading a book where I was in the main role, a completely different and alien me. I changed thanks to this incident and will never be the same again. And I realized something very important, so this drug has its advantages. Maybe so. But why didn't you tell me everything right away? And in general, no matter what, I worry about you. Glad to hear that. He said, smiling contentedly and sharply hugging Naruto. You're incorrigible. Despite the grumbling, she still hugged him, resting her head on his chest. Listen, what do you love about older people? Kakashi suddenly said. What? Well, you said that you would marry either old man second or Kurama. So, they are far from young, and the second one died a long time ago. So I thought, if you want, I can. Are you such an idiot? Naruto asked displeasedly, but didn't break the hug. If you forgot, then I'll remind you, you're not 14 years old either. But Tobarama-san is alive and doesn't seem to be going to die. Is it you who simultaneously gave me a chance and immediately took it away? How did you twist everything like that, huh? She asked with a heavy sigh. I'll take it and live with dad all my life. So that means I was right, then. God, I can't correct you. Dear one scold, they just amuse themselves. Sakura sang sarcastically, approaching the hugging couple. I can smell your desire to kill from here. Naruto answered, covering Kakashi with herself while he put on his mask. Dobe. That's all Sasuke said, shaking his head and sighing heavily. What Dobe? Naruto asked, getting up from the ground and shaking off the grass. Ha. Huh. The guy sighed, not intending to answer the girl's question. Once the complaints are over, let's go. Naruto said, grabbing Sakura's hand and heading towards the small settlement where Hans was supposed to be. On the way to the settlement, Sakura kept asking Naruto about what happened between her and Kakashi. Akari just walked next to them listening to the girl's stories. Sasuke and Kakashi preferred to walk in silence. In two hours, they were able to reach the settlement. There they met a man sitting next to some small house. Where are the travelers heading? The man asked as Team 7 walked past him. We are looking for Merchant Hans. Kakashi said, looking at the man. He was dressed in the most ordinary green shabby kimono, his face was covered with a network of wrinkles, and his dark eyes looked at those around him with kindness. His short dark hair was streaked with some gray. That's how it is. Sorry to upset you, but he recently left this place and headed to a distant settlement where a traveling market should soon be located. Said the man, shaking his head sadly. Ha, the mission promises to be long. 
Naruto said, lowering her head to the floor, pessimistically. But someday we will definitely find him. Can I ask why you are looking for Hans? Apparently, you are a ninja? Asked the man. He has quite a lot of chakra, apparently he is a ninja. Be careful with this person. Said the fox, shaking his tails displeasedly. My friend fell under the influence of a drug, and in order to cure him, rare herbs are needed, which only Hans has. Even if it takes a year, I will find him and get these herbs. After all, he is very dear to me. Naruto said confidently looking into the man's eyes, who heard the girl's answer and smiled contentedly. Well, if you are pursuing such a noble goal, then Hans simply cannot ignore your pressure. Said the man laughing. Oh, Naruchan, I'm so pleased that you're worried about me. Kakashi said, putting his hands to his cheeks and looking embarrassed. Don't look at his appearance, in fact, this old guy is almost 30, Sasuke said with a sly smile. Don't make a scene in the middle of the village. Naruto said, looking at the still squirming guy. And this is our sensei, Sakura said pessimistically. Looking at her under sensei. Fahaha. The man laughed, watching the company. Well, if you go out right now, you'll probably get there before he leaves. Thank you for your help, then we'll go. Naruto said. Well then, good luck to you, I hope you make it in time. He said. See you. He said to the back of the retreating guys. He. So unlucky. Sakura whined as she walked next to Naruto. Well, some of them have the whole village chasing him. To get such rare herbs. He's a ninja, so some people aren't even sure what he really looks like. So if we find him in that village, it will be incredible luck. Naruto said. They walked for a short time, after about an hour or two, they decided to sit down and have a snack. After eating and talking about what this Hans might be like, they set off on the road again, only this time Naruto went along with Kakashi, all the while exchanging jokes and jokes. Sakura walked next to Sasuke and Akari and did not stop talking the whole way, talking about how good, smart and strong Sasuke Kuen is. Sasuke and Akari adopted a strategy of silence and humility. Akari, unlike Sasuke, took this position without thinking, thinking about something of her own. Towards nightfall, they decided to set up camp near a small forest. When they finally lit a fire, it was already completely dark. After preparing dinner, they sat around the fire. I think it's time to write to Tuchan. Naruto said, taking out a notebook with special sheets of paper for letters, given by Tuchan, before one of the missions. Having finally finished writing the letter, she began to read it, with an innocent look, although her eyes were sparkling. Dear Daddy. I am in good health, the search is going well. I met one very interesting, but at the same time, strange lady. Something unexpected also happened. Kakashi and I became a married couple, so the owner of the tea house told us, and put us in the same room. We spent that night together. But in the morning I decided that I would marry only Karama, because only he is always next to me, but then I thought and decided that only daddy can be my husband. Your beloved daughter, Naruto. P slash S, I hope you eat and relax during your breaks from work. The letter, of course, is simply the best, but why drag me in, asked the fox, finally stopping laughing. Just like that, especially since he won't get you while you're in me. You understand how ambiguous this sounds? Karama asked, smiling maliciously. I do not understand what you're saying. The girl eluded the answer, returning to reality. Having placed the letter in the envelope, without thinking twice, she summoned one of her foxes. This time a little red fox appeared to her. She happily agreed to fulfill Naruto's instructions, and galloped off into the night. Meanwhile, the guys allocated their duty hours. Kakashi was the first, so Naruto went to bed, not worrying about the safety of the guys. The night passed peacefully, so in the morning, after a quick snack of sandwiches, they hit the road again. It will be like this for too long. We may not make it in time. Naruto said as she walked. And what do you suggest? Sasuke replied to Naruto's displeased statement. 
run. She answered. If the girls can't run at our pace, then I'll just call the fox. I was trained in the arts of ninja, so I can run, plus I have pretty good stamina. Akari interjected into the conversation, looking into Naruto's eyes with her eyes the color of warm caramel, as if hinting at something. I can do it too. Sakura repeated, clenching her hands into fists. Then let's go. Kakashi said, after which everyone set off. She's clearly a strong and well-trained ninja. Kurama said. You're right, but I don't understand why she needs ninja security then? And why didn't she talk about this before? Naruto asked, peering at Akari's back. She's weird, I don't trust her. Said the fox, snorting contemptuously. But we also can't say she's the enemy. Just like we can't say that she's a friend. The fox retorted with a satisfied face. Well, you've completely confused me. Satisfied? She asked, realizing that her tenant was completely right. They didn't run like this for long, because the girls needed rest, Sakura in particular. After having lunch and looking at the map how far they still had to go, the guys hit the road again. All the way, Naruto was tormented by thoughts of Akari. Who is she, where is she from, what is her story, and is she real with them now? In her thoughts, she did not even notice the arrival in the village. Deciding not to waste time, they went together, in search of the merchant. After wandering around the market a little, they realized that he was not here. Deciding not to lose hope, Naruto went to look for him in the surrounding area. After wandering around and asking locals, they found nothing. I'll go for a walk before bed. Naruto said as they settled into one of the tea houses. Without waiting for an answer, she left the building and headed towards the river to think about her future strategy and just watch the sunset. The river turned out to be not very big, but no less beautiful, bathed in the rays of the setting sun. Walking along the shore, Naruto came across an old man sitting on the shore, wrapped from head to toe in rags, in front of him, on a piece of fabric, lay clearly cheap jewelry, but beautifully shining in the sun. Naruto had never been much of a lover of jewelry or anything like that, but this one didn't seem that bad. Admit it, you just want to help him, but you just can't give him money, because he won't take it. I see you right through, darling. He. You figured me out, but one pendant with that beautiful butterfly won't hurt. She answered, approaching the old man. How much will that butterfly pendant cost? Naruto asked, sitting down next to the piece of fabric and pointing to the thing she liked. As much as you give, it will cost as much. He answered her without raising his head. Then I hope this is enough? She asked, holding out a large bill. Thank you. The old man answered, holding out the pendant. And welcome to the traveling merchant Hans. He added, removing his hood. What? Naruto asked, her eyes wide and staring at the man in front of her. You are the same old man who told us about Hans. Ha ha. The man laughed at the girl's amazed look. You're right. It was a test, so to speak. I will sell herbs, but only to you. No one should follow you especially that girl with the paper rose. He said, frowning his eyebrows, which made his gaze much heavier. But why? She needs herbs too. Naruto was indignant, which is why a warm smile returned to Hans's lips. It's not my herbs she needs. The man began to speak, noticing the girl's surprised look, he hastened to satisfy her curiosity. I'll tell you about everything a little later, but now we have to go. Having finished speaking, Hans again threw on the dark hood, hiding his face in it. Having collected the jewelry, the man moved along the river bank. Naruto hesitated for a few seconds and followed him. Don't you think we've gotten ourselves into some kind of again? The fox was indignant, snorting displeasedly. I don't think I know. But the size of the ass we got into is unknown to me. Naruto muttered just as dissatisfied. They walked along the river for a few more minutes, but as soon as they passed next to the stone sign, the situation around them changed dramatically. They found themselves in a small room with shelves on the walls, containing herbs. 
Next to one of the walls, there was an extension somewhat reminiscent of a counter, on which there were several candles. Behind the counter, there is a rack with cells for herbs. There was a pleasant aroma in the air, and the atmosphere seemed fabulous and unreal. Where are we? Naruto asked excitedly running around the room and looking at the shelves with goods. In my house and part-time store. He answered, sitting down in a rocking chair, before taking off the cloak that hid his face. Dear, do we really have guests? Asked a certain woman, entering the room where Hans and Naruto were now. Oh, this is the same sweet lady from the market. Eh? Auntie? The girl asked, looking at the woman dressed in an apron and a pink dress with a white check, recognizing her as the herbalist from whom they bought most of them. Ho ho, so you remember me? My name is Lily, and I am Han's wife, nice to meet you Naruto-chan. Said the woman, sitting down in a chair next to her husband, pointing the girl to the empty chair opposite. How do you know my name? Naruto asked, sitting down in a chair. The couple just laughed at her question. Orochimaru-chan wrote to us asking that we provide you with all the herbs you need. The man answered, smiling contentedly. Yes, so, so. But we also had to check you and your motives, even if it was Orochimaru-chan's request. Lily continued. You passed the test, but the girl you met at the market is dangerous. She's been trying to track me for a long time. But why does she need this? Why does she need you? She asked, abruptly rising from her chair. You probably already know that I'm a shinobi. I am the last member of my clan, so I am obliged to keep all the techniques and take them with me to the grave, or hand them over to a trusted person. Some of them should never fall into the wrong hands. The man said, rubbing the bridge of his nose and looking thoughtfully at the girl. Then Akari needs these techniques, do I understand correctly? Naruto asked, still not believing that this girl could be on the side of evil. Unfortunately, it is so. And not today, then tomorrow she will find me. Therefore, I have a request to you. Han said, looking down at the floor. Please save these techniques and don't let them fall into the clutches of the Akatsuki. Hey man, you're not ready to shift your problems onto a little girl, that's all ready. The fox screamed indignantly, grinding his teeth and spreading his tails. Fine. Naruto interrupted him, confidently looking at the man and woman in front of her, relief visible on their faces. She herself clutched a star-shaped pendant hidden under her clothes. Naruto, your kindness will one day bring you to your grave. Kurama said tiredly, realizing that scolding her was pointless. It won't hurt me to have you. Thank you. Said the woman, smiling and holding her husband's hand. Lily suddenly jumped up from her chair, as if remembering something. That's right, I've already collected the herbs you need. Oh yes. Thank you. Come with me, I'll give you the scrolls. Said Hans, getting up from his chair and heading towards the door. Naruto followed. Sorry for the question, but why are you the only one left from the entire clan? Naruto asked following the man into a room with many shelves on which books and scrolls were neatly arranged. Nothing, I understand your curiosity. When I was still a green teenager, my clan was slaughtered because they were considered a threat, I was lucky because that day I stayed at a secret base studying clan techniques. I was supposed to become the head of the clan, I ended up becoming a traveling merchant with a shinobi background. Ha, huh, fate is extremely cruel. He said, opening the secret box in the mirror, smiling sadly and remembering the past. Taking out several scrolls, he handed them to the girl. Don't tell anyone about them, not even your family, and especially not Orochimaru-chan. He said, frowning his eyebrows, trying to look as serious as possible. Naruto nodded and took the scrolls in her hands. Without thinking twice, she activated the seal on her body and hid the scrolls there. So you really are an Uzumaki. And by the way, I am the future Hokage. She said, raising her nose to the sky and taking an awkward pose, trying to brighten up the situation. Haha, <laughs> it probably looked ridiculous, but still this is my dream. Haha, <laughs> you have a wonderful dream, Naruto-chan. I think it's time for you, 
your friends are probably already worried. Ah. I completely forgot about this. She shouted, turning pale and clutching her face with her hands. He he, here are your herbs. Lily laughed as she entered the room, approaching the girl she held out a bunch of herbs, a white envelope peeked out between the herbs. But Naruto didn't pay much attention to it. If you want to see each other again or need herbs, come here. You can always get here, and if we are not here, you are free to take whatever you need, or wait for us in the guest room. Thank you. Naruto answered happily smiling, clutching the herbs to herself, but immediately remembering them, she hurried to place them with others in the scroll. I think it's time for me to go, otherwise the guys will overturn the whole country of tea. Fine. See you then. The spouses answered, standing in an embrace and smiling kindly. Naruto, as soon as she opened the front door, found herself on the river bank. Something is wrong here. You're right, but first of all I have to warn the guys. Without wasting any time, Naruto scanned the area in search of the guys. They weren't very far away, but Akari wasn't next to them. Without wasting time, she ran to the guys, but her thoughts were occupied with the pendant and its owner. Kakashi and the others were found quite quickly. Kakashi, where is Akari? Naruto asked, grabbing the guy by the shoulders and peering into his eye. Mma, Naruto calm down. She left and said that she would go on her own. He replied, not understanding Naruto's actions at all. Dobe, what happened? Sasuke asked, announcing the question that worried the whole team. Akari is not Akari. Said the girl, but the surprise on her friends' faces was the answer to her remark. That is, she is not who she claims to be, plus judging by the information that I have, she belongs to Akatsuki, the organization that attacked us during the exam. Well, luck is on our side as always. Kakashi said, rubbing the bridge of his nose. She left you a letter and asked that you read it. He said, handing the envelope to the girl. She did not boldly take it in her hands, fearing what she might read there. Taking a deep breath and calming her nerves, she opened the envelope and began to read. The words seemed to blur across the paper, making her task more difficult. The rest of the team just watched their friends' indecisive actions. Dear Naruto, since you are reading this letter, I am no longer here. I need to leave just a little more, and I will become attached to you, despite the fact that we are on different sides. I will find a merchant myself and take what I need. Sorry. Watch out for Tycho. See you. Conan. I got what we need, we'll spend the night here today, and tomorrow we'll hit the road. Naruto said looking at her friends and hoping that Conan would not be able to find Hans and Lily. The guys decided not to touch on this topic anymore and, in deathly silence, headed to the tea house where they stayed for the night. Naruto was placed with Sakura and Kakashi with Sasuke. Naruto remained in the room with Sakura, lying quietly and looking at the ceiling. Naruto, Sakura called quietly, attracting her neighbor's attention. Yes? She asked, without taking her eyes off the ceiling. MMM, the girl hesitated, you became a shinobi a long time ago and were on difficult missions. Yes. Then, you've probably already gone through something similar, right? Sakura asked, still awkwardly looking away. To be honest, I went through the betrayal of temporary allies, but for some reason, you always expect a trick from them. But Conan, she reminded me more of an older sister than a traitor, Naruto answered, distracted from her internal thoughts. Yes, I couldn't distinguish a traitor from a friend, and he's also called the commander of the ANBU squad. Naruto said allowing herself to mope a little. No, that will not do. Sakura said confidently, overcoming her doubts. Naruto, come to your senses. She said, grabbing her friend's cheeks. You can't be mopey, it doesn't suit you at all, I like that Naruto who always smiles and makes fun of Sasuke Kuen and Kakashi Sensei. So you like me? Naruto asked, eyes wide and mouth parted in surprise. And that's all you understood from her monologue? 
Kurama said tiredly, while perfectly understanding that Sakura managed to pull Naruto out of the just beginning blues. Huh? What are you saying? Sakura said, jumping away from her friend and blushing deeply. So you really like me? Naruto asked again with shining eyes. Why yes, I guess, said the embarrassed girl, covering her mouth with the back of her hand and looking away to the side. Finally, you admitted it. Naruto shouted, rushing to hug her friend. Trying to hug her, she only knocked Sakura to the floor, hanging over her. Naruto, I'm here, Kakashi, who entered the room, began to say, but froze at the sight of this picture. Will you take the third one? Kakashi sang, making the girls blush. You will not get anything from me. Get the hell out of here. Naruto shouted, throwing a pillow at the guy, he deftly caught it and sent it back. Sakura, meanwhile, tried to understand what was happening. Oh, my wife is cheating on me with her friend. Kakashi said theatrically, wiping tears from his eyes, but immediately closing the door to the room to escape Naruto's demonic attack. He is idiot. Naruto stated calmly, getting up from Sakura and helping her up. I can't deny the obvious. Sakura confirmed. After a minute of silence, both burst into boisterous laughter at the comedy of this situation. They did not go to bed soon, talking about everything in the world. Meanwhile, somewhere in Koniha, one enraged Hokage went on a rampage and was contemplating a plan to kill his unson in law After sleep, the first thing Naruto saw was a mop of pink hair that tickled her nose with its cherry scent. The owner of this treasure lay with her back to Naruto and snored peacefully. Naruto's thoughts were far from this and revolved around Conan, she was trying to understand why she didn't attack them. Considered too weak? Just didn't want to waste her time? Or she still managed to get used to them and maybe even become attached? The thought of this warmed her soul and gave her hope that Conan was still a good person. By the way, don't you think we've heard this name somewhere before? Kurama asked, interrupting the girl's train of thoughts. After you said that, I realized that I really heard this name from someone. But only from whom? She asked, unconsciously frowning and staring thoughtfully at the ceiling. Naruto, what are you thinking about? Sakura asked, turning to face the girl. Yes, so. Good morning, by the way, she said, relaxing under her friend's gaze and smiling from all thirty-two. Are you going to get up or should I leave you here? Sasuke asked as he entered the room. Oh yeah. Kakashi, a pervert has snuck in on us. Naruto shouted with a satisfied expression and a fox-like grin. Dobe. Sasuke drawled wearily. He sent me to you himself. The perverts are in cahoots, the girl said, pouting and making her friend laugh. Frowning offended, the guy walked out of the room with a proud look, leaving the girls alone. Having quickly gathered, the group decided to hit the road after breakfast. Naruto decided to see Hans and Lily before leaving. Heading towards Hans's house, she was completely immersed in her thoughts, not paying attention to external and internal factors. Naruto. Wake up at last. Kurama shouted, finally bringing Naruto to his senses. Having finally come to her senses, she only noticed Kunai flying at her. Her body refused to obey or at least somehow submit to the mistress. A grave cold emanated from the star, hidden under the clothes from which fear gripped the soul inside with slippery tentacles. The girl took a deep breath, gathering determination to overcome her fear. Boldly raising her eyes, Naruto saw only the back of some ANBU, who used a katana to deflect a weapon flying at her. Looking at his tense figure and dark hair, Naruto felt her fear gradually subside. She's not alone. Thank the sage, you are okay again. And so what we have, an amulet with a seal of paralysis, our familiar stranger from the root ANBU and your crazy admirer. Said the fox, growling clearly irritated by this situation. God, for the first time I'm grateful to Danzo, maybe he's not so bad after all. Naruto said as she felt like she could partially move again. Yeah, wearing and forever wearing the enemy's gift wasn't your best decision. Naruto. Are you okay? 
A quiet, calm voice sounded, almost emotionless. However, the tension in the ANBU's body made it clear that he was feeling something. Yes, already yes. Thank you, Naruto started to say when she was interrupted by a guy in a cloak. Oh, how nice it is that you still wore my gift. I didn't even hope for this. The guy saying, throwing off his hood revealing his face, on which a wide smile shone. Oh, everything was just wonderful, but who would have thought that you had such a brave night? The guy laughed. Why would a dragon in love have to kill your knight? I'm sorry, but this princess is mine. Don't come near. Stay with me. The guy still calmly said, ready to sacrifice his life. He didn't have time to say anything else, reflecting the poisonous Sanban, several of them would have reached their target if Naruto hadn't arrived in time. If you think about it this way, this is the first time you spoke to me, so it's too early for you to die. Naruto said, catching her ally's surprised look. He. Princess, you're breaking my heart. You're just forcing me to become much more serious. The ash-haired man sang, taking out several dozen puppets from the seal. An almost manic smile appeared on his face, which did not bode well. The girl cursed, knowing full well that dealing with these puppets would not be easy. From the aura of her ally, she realized that he was not happy either. Oh. Honey, do you like them? I created them from the bodies of samurai, isn't it just beautiful? Do you want me to do the same with your knight? You don't have to answer, I can see everything in your eyes. The guy began his story, opening his arms to the sides, demonstrating madness with his entire appearance. The sight of Taiko excited by his own words only aroused in Naruto a feeling of fear, fear that one day he would be able to get her. Sparkles of excitement and adoration shone in his eyes. As soon as the guy had enough time to enjoy the sight of his beloved, the puppets began to attack. Deftly managing so many puppets, Taiko directed all attacks towards the ANBU, without even trying to harm Naruto, only blocking her blows. The puppets unleashed a cascade of weapons at their opponent, while several others separated the girl from her partner, allowing her to come under attack. Naruto, it looks like you won't attack without making sure you won't get hit. So try to stay close to this frostbite, this may slow down his attacks. Understood. Naruto replied, channeling chakra into the kunai and cutting the enemy's chakra threads. Taking advantage of this confusion, she hurried to her ally, creating a again as she went and striking one of the attacking puppets at the guy from behind. Fighting off the blows and cutting the chakra threads of the puppets, Naruto noticed how Taiko resumed them a moment later. While the root ANBU was distracted by another waterfall of poisonous Sanban, one of the puppets raised a katana to pierce the enemy. But then Naruto arrived and with one powerful blow, backed up by Chakra, she broke the katana. It shattered into small fragments, one of which cut the girl's cheek, from which blood immediately began to flow. No? No. It is forbidden. My sweet princess. Blood that is like a scarlet flower should not bloom. Tycho began to scream, clutching his head with his hands and staggering, unable to stand confidently on his feet. The puppets froze for a moment, but immediately collapsed to the ground, thereby shocking Naruto, just like her ally. The aura around Tycho began to thicken, and his muttering became more and more unintelligible and frightening. A dissatisfied female voice sounded behind Naruto. Turning around, she saw a woman with beautiful short purple hair and eyes the same as Akari's, with light purple eyeliner. There was a piercing under his lip. And in her hair, there is a hair clip with a paper rose. She was wearing a black cloak with red clouds, indicating that she belonged to the same group that Taiko belonged to. Conan! Naruto shouted, recognizing the woman as her recent companion. While she was looking at Conan, paper began to wrap around Tycho's body. Preventing him from moving, leaving only his head in the air, attaching a powerful seal of paralysis to the paper cocoon. Meanwhile, Conan began to approach Naruto, but ANBU blocked her passage. Join Akatsuki, together we can bring peace to this world. You want this too, right? Conan asked, peering into the girl's face. No. Your methods are wrong. 
I'm not going to follow them. Naruto said confidently, clenching her palms into fists and looking straight into the woman's eyes. How about until the next meeting then? I hope then I will hear a positive answer. Conan said, closing her eyes and, without expressing any emotion, walked past the girl under the gaze of her guard. A paper platform began to form under the cocoon, on which Conan and Taiko left this place. When they disappeared from sight, Naruto sighed with relief and turned her attention to the guy's hand, along which blood ran in a thin strip. The guy himself was about to leave when Naruto grabbed his hand, preventing him from leaving. You're wounded. Let me help you, what if there was poison in there? She asked, looking seriously into the guy's eyes through the narrow slits of the mask. I am resistant to poisons. He answered briefly, but this did not make Naruto any less serious. Let me treat your wounds as a sign of gratitude. She said, squeezing his hand tighter in her hand. A sigh was heard behind the mask, indicating the girl's complete freedom of action. Moving away from the battlefield to the nearest tree, Naruto sat the guy down on the floor and took out the first aid kit from the scroll. Listen, since you finally started talking to me, maybe you can tell me what I can call you? The girl asked, trying to start a conversation while simultaneously starting to treat a small wound from the Sanban. As you wish. He answered, showing no signs that he might be in pain. Then. How about Sai? Naruto asked, still not looking up from the wound. The guy simply remained silent to this. I've finished everything. Come see me again anyway. Having said this, Naruto hid the first aid kit in a scroll. Yes. Answered the guy, not entirely sure whether he would be allowed to continue keeping an eye on this interesting girl who made her feel warm in her chest. He promised himself to look after her, this was no longer just an order from Danzo, or a task. This is his first independent decision in a long time. I'll wait, sigh. Naruto said, looking at the place where her old new acquaintance was just a second ago. Huh. Everything worked out. Naruto said tiredly falling to the ground, looking up at the sky, looking at the slowly floating clouds. Yes. This time everything worked out, because this guy is obsessed with you. If you weren't here, your protector would already be rotting in the ground. The fox muttered. Need more training. Naruto said confidently, clenching her hands into fists. I was too relaxed, interrupting team number seven. Yes. As much as I would like to console you and tell you that everything is okay. But you need to develop further. First of all, we need to increase your physical strength so that we can train the Bija mode. Said the fox, confirming the girl's words. Do you think the guys need to know about what happened? The girl asked, descending into the subconscious and without a shadow of fear entering her tenant's cage. I'm not eager to tell them about it. But they will clearly understand something. He said as Naruto lay down on one of his tails. You are right. But I'm afraid that Tuchan will no longer let me out without protection, not only from the village, but also from the house, she answered, burying her nose in the fox's fur. But on the other hand, if I keep silent about it and he finds out, then I won't leave the house at all. Hey and how problematic, Databeo. You. It's your Databeo again. He growled, turning away dissatisfied. Well, Ku. I didn't do it on purpose. It's somehow just like that. The girl began to make excuses. But when she saw the grin on Karama's face, she laughed, forgetting about all the problems. Well, then, Arosanan and Grandma will be on my side. Haha. -ha. I'm not sure about the first's granddaughter. Make sure she doesn't hide you and surround you with hyper care. Ku said sarcastically, immediately laughing at the expression on the girl's face. By the way, haven't you forgotten that your team is waiting for you? I completely forgot about this. She screamed, turning pale. Naruto came out of her subconscious and hurried to the gathering place. There she was met by three dissatisfied glances. From Sakura's look, Naruto realized that she would probably be beaten, perhaps kicked, perhaps on the head. Before you hit me, please listen. 
And if anything, Kakashi, compared to you, I'm just an angel. Naruto said, intriguing her team. I was attacked by Taiko and Conan. Although Conan helped rather than attack. But that's not the point. The main thing is that it's not my fault. What? How long ago did this happen? Are you injured? Sakura bombarded her with questions, looking her friend up and down. Sakura-chan, I'm not hurt. He had no desire to harm me. Let me tell you everything in more detail after we arrive in Kanoha. I will still need to report everything to Tuchan. Naruto said carefree. While she was talking, Kakashi came closer to her with a serious expression on his face and immediately embraced her. Idiot. Thank God you're okay. But you could send a clone to us so that he would tell us everything and I would come to your aid at that very moment. He said, squeezing her more and more tightly in his arms. Sorry. I didn't want to put you in danger too. She said, clutching Kakashi's vest in her hands. From now on, you won't take a step without security. Kakashi said, crushing all Naruto's hopes. We completely agree. Sasuke and Sakura said in unison. Ah. How is that possible? Naruto shouted, earning laughter from her teammates and an approving smile from Hans, who was watching the company from afar. After a few more minutes of laughing and talking, the team decided to hit the road. This time they again decided to speed up the process, only they slowed down the pace a little. So in total they got there before dark. Deciding not to go home, but to immediately take the report to the Hokage, Naruto, and Kakashi went to the residence, before sending Sasuke and Sakura home to rest. Although it would be more accurate to say that Sasuke carried Sakura home. On the way to the residence, Naruto kept thinking about the best way to tell her father everything so that he would not lock her at home under the supervision of hundreds of ANBU. In the office, they were met by Minato and Tobarama, sorting out documents. Seeing his daughter, Minato smiled and hurried to hug her. Already hugging his daughter, he turned his attention to Kakashi. Noticing Minato's glance at the guy, Tobarama smiled sarcastically, which meant nothing good for Kakashi. Well, you're numb, run. Minato said smiling in the cutest way. Kakashi swallowed and broke out in a cold sweat and looked away, pretending that he didn't understand what the teacher was talking about. Daddy, I need to tell you something. But promise me you won't lock me up at home under guard. Naruto said, trying to hide how nervous she was. Fine. But I can't promise anything about security. Minato said, sitting down on one of the sofas, getting ready to listen, before making sure that the anti-wiretapping seal was working. Naruto, taking more air into her lungs, began her story. The more she spoke, the gloomier the men became. So I decided that I needed to become much stronger and learn the sanding mode. Naruto finished speaking. I really want to take my words back. Minato said, frowning and glaring at the floor. Little one, how did you manage to find such a schizo? Plus, they are trying to drag you into some sect. Tobarama said. But I didn't look for him, he found me himself. I don't even understand why he's so obsessed with me. You're just like my brother, he also knew how to find adventures for your ass, without really bothering. The second sighed tiredly, to which Naruto laughed nervously. Deciding not to torment his daughter anymore after the long journey, Minato sent her. Kakashi and Tobarama home to rest, promising not to stay late at work. Arriving home, Naruto first of all, went to the bathroom to soak in warm water. Kakashi decided to follow her example, that is, take a shower and then read a book. After the bath, the girl went down to the living room. Tobarama was already sitting there, holding a painfully familiar book in his hands, open somewhere in the middle. How do you like the plot? Naruto asked, smiling maliciously, and sitting down next to her. I personally don't really like this book, the previous one was better. Aren't you a little too small for such books? He asked, arching his eyebrow in surprise. You better tell me why you ran away from the Echiha quarter. Naruto deftly changed the topic. I have never been known to have good relations with them. 
Although to be honest, that little guy Itachi and Shursue aren't that bad. They really love Kanoha. Tobarama said. By the way, you still want to be my student? Eh? Naruto opened her mouth in surprise, not believing her ears. Of course. Having shouted this, she immediately hugged the man, squeezing him in an iron embrace. He just patted her on the head, ruffling her hair. Second Sama, don't you think that this already looks like pedophilia? Kakashi asked, frozen in the doorway. What is so interesting that you are talking about here? Minato asked, frozen in the passage. It's nothing like that. Do not pay attention. Naruto said walking up to her father. He only arched his eyebrow in surprise as a sign of disbelief. I finally found myself a mentor. About. As I understand it, it was you, Second Sama, who finally surrendered to the mercy of my daughter. The man drawled contentedly, but Tobarama pretended that he had not heard his words. For some reason, I suddenly felt sorry for the second, like the like-minded people. Karama drawled, sincerely sympathizing with Tobarama. And yes, I have good news. Jiraiya Sensei returns today. Hooray! The girl shouted, jumping for joy. I just have a little business for him. She said, rubbing her hand slyly. For some reason, this expression on your face makes me think of some not very happy thoughts. Kakashi said sarcastically, to which Naruto snorted irritably. Ha! Huh. How cruelly you hurt my soul with your words. The girl said upset, sniffling at the end of the sentence. The great actress in you is dying. The guy retorted, chuckling at the end. Okay for you. You behave like children. Naruto, have you already gone to Orochimaru? Minato asked, sitting down on the sofa. No, I was just about to go to him. Naruto said as she grabbed Kakashi's hand and dragged him towards the exit. As far as I understand, no one asked my opinion? He asked, not even resisting the strong grip of the seemingly fragile girl. Nope dash, she sang, already leaving the house. A quiet chuckle from a guy sounded behind her. On the way to the laboratory, Naruto was seen off by everyone with the same looks, only among them more and more friendly-minded people began to meet. Peering at Naruto's back, the guy only squeezed her palm tighter in his hand, noticing how her muscles tensed. They reached the laboratory quite quickly. The room greeted them with coolness and bright lighting, which took both of them a few seconds to get used to. An unpleasant chill ran across my skin. Who came to me? Orochimaru asked, coming out from behind the racks of test tubes. Long time no see. Having said this, Naruto impressively walked towards the snake, taking out scrolls with herbs as she went. Fufu. I thought you were taking longer, but fortunately you did not live up to my expectations. Said the snake, smiling good-naturedly. Can this be considered a compliment? Kakashi asked, looking at the various test tubes on the shelves. You collected everything you need, I praise you. In a week everything will be ready. Orochimaru said, happily ignoring the guy's words. Then I'll see you later. Said the girl, heading towards the exit. Yeah. That's all he answered, finally waving his hand at them and returning to work. Once outside, Naruto blissfully closed her eyes. Enjoying the warm rays of the sun. She was distracted from such an interesting pastime by a click on her forehead. Frowning with dissatisfaction, she stroked the place where the unknown person's fingers had been a second ago. I just returned, and you immediately give up, Itachi. Opening her eyes, she saw Itachi and Shursue in front of her, the first smiled tenderly, which caused the same smile from Naruto herself. Oya, Kakashi, can you roll your eyes a little more quietly? Shursue asked, turning his attention to his opponent. I can't promise anything. Kakashi sang sarcastically. Now it was Naruto's turn to roll his eyes in displeasure. Are you on patrol now? She decided to change the topic, paying attention to the guy's clothes. We're just returning from there. As far as I understand, you were with Orochimaru? Shursue asked, deciding to put aside bickering with Kakashi for a while. 
Yeah, I'm going to go to a Turaku, I'm so bored with delicious ramen. The girl sang, placing her palms on her slightly reddened cheeks and smiling dreamily. That's what Naruto is all about, haha, Itachi said quietly, laughing nervously at the end. He. Naruto-chan. You cut me to the very heart, didn't you miss me? Shursui said jokingly, grabbing the place where his heart was approximately located. After all, I missed you very much. The guy suddenly became serious and took Naruto's palm, kissing the back of it. At the same time, looking straight into Naruto's eyes, making a sly face. Such a drastic change made her heart dance. Hey, Curly, I see it's been a while since anyone gave you a Lyuli Kakashi asked, grabbing Shursui's wrist and moving it away from the embarrassed girl. Why yeah, as I understand it, you wanted it too? Shursui asked, intending to kill his opponent with his gaze. Can they be stopped? Naruto asked Itachi standing next to her in a whisper. Nope, let's watch a little more. He answered, smiling the kindest smile he could muster. Yes, he just wants them to kill each other. Said the fox, having had a good laugh at this situation. Maybe. Naruto answered somehow doomedly. Well, actually, I'm her husband. Kakashi sang, smiling triumphantly. Still, the rest fell into a stupor. It's okay. There is still a divorce. Shursui retorted, smiling contentedly. Ah. Itachi has turned to stone and is crumbling. Naruto shouted, trying to revive her friend lying on the ground. Next to his hand was a suicide note, what the hell? He died with a smile on his face. She said, sobbing and not paying attention to the quarreling idiots. Meanwhile, a crowd had gathered around them, including some Uchiha faces, who were supposed to be on patrol now. I'm out of popcorn. Does anyone else have one? Asked someone from the crowd. Here you are. And I want it too. Naruto said and walked towards the man with the popcorn stand. Now she too settled down among the crowd and watched her friends quarrel. House too, some. The fox grumbled, and then went to bed, realizing that he wouldn't see anything new except the new release of House 2, and he already has enough crap in this life. It's time to stop them while the village is still intact, Naruto said, reluctantly putting down the glass of popcorn. Approaching the oblivious guys, the girl came up with a brilliant plan. Inhaling, the girl hit the guys with their foreheads, resulting in a small incident. Well, or big, depending on how you look at it. The guy's lips met in a passionate kiss, from which both immediately turned green and hastened to pull away, spitting and wailing. Your idea turned out to be simply genial. Karama said, somehow holding back his laughter. Mom, I couldn't restrain myself and became a yaoi worker. Naruto said watching the poor guys. I praise you. Itachi, who had risen from the dead, said, wiping the blood from the corner of his mouth and trying not to laugh. Catching the glances of the guy sitting on the ground, Naruto began to sweat and looked away. Oh. My iron is not ironed and the cat is not turned off, I guess I'll go, Databeo. Naruto said, retreating under the menacing glances of the rising guys. She had little choice either to die a brave death or to hide in Orochimaru's laboratory, where she could die as a result of dismemberment. After weighing both options and thinking logically, she rushed to the snake's hole, the guys immediately rushed after her. But thanks to Itachi's help, she successfully slammed the heavy door in their faces. Closing the door, she sighed in relief. The owner of the den crawled out at the sound and looked at his guest in surprise. Naruto's joy did not last long as Shursui appeared at the front of the dancing sheets. Ah! Uh. Auric! Save! Kill, rape. Naruto shouted as she pressed herself against the door. And what I get for this? Asked the snake, smiling slyly. Fleeing from one, I fell into the clutches of another. Well, what the dot be? Naruto-chan, I just want to talk to you. The guy said, smiling tenderly, but his eyes betrayed her that they were sitting inside. My intuition says that my is. Naruto said laughing nervously. 
tell him they didn't ask him. He said smiling wider. It seems like this time I got into trouble because I didn't want to, without waiting for the girl's answer, Shursui picked her up in his arms and disappeared into Shunshin again. Opening her eyes, Naruto realized that she was in a guy's house. Shursui sat her down on the bed. He himself began to unfasten his vest, removing it and the bandage, watching the blushing girl. Oh. 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 Naruto mentally cursed, looking at the guy who was left in only a turtleneck and pants. He slyly narrowed his eyes and began to approach the bed, while smiling the most angelic smile. Having thrown the girl onto the blanket, he hovered over her, enjoying her embarrassed look. After staying in this position for a few more seconds, he began to approach her face, to which Naruto only shyly closed her eyes, expecting a kiss. But she never felt the warmth of someone else's lips, instead, Shursui simply lay down next to her, hugging her. Yes, yes, it's me again. Oblomingo bird. Burying her face in the guy's chest, Naruto, still red, quietly asked. And what was that? Punishment. Shursui replied, holding the girl by the waist with one hand and running through her hair with the other. She only muttered something incomprehensible in response and fell silent. After a few seconds, all Shursui could hear was quiet snoring. Lord, how naive do you have to be to fall asleep in the arms of a guy who just a minute ago tried to seduce you? The guy asked, looking at the top of the girl's head. Yes, that's all you are, you always find rivals for me, and don't give. Naruto woke up and found that she was now lying in a different position than before. She was still lying on the bed of Wanachiha, covered with a blanket. Did you wake up yet? Shursui asked opening the door and entering the bedroom. His hair was wet, which suggested that he had just come out of the shower. Yes, yes, the guy had a question, degree, degree. He himself was dressed in a turtleneck and indoor pants. Yeah. How long did I sleep? Naruto asked with a yawn. About two to three hours, or something like that. The guy said with a shrug. Erosanen was supposed to be back soon. The girl remembered, staring out the window where she was greeted by the darkness of the night. He's not going anywhere, he has business in the village this time. So go to bed anyway, it's late, and you're off a mission. He said, sitting down next to her. Okay. But if Tachan finds out where I spent the night with you, the girl said quietly, at the end falling silent and surrendering to the arms of sleep. At the periphery of consciousness, she felt the guy touch the corner of her lips, with a weightless kiss. Naruto woke up, due to someone screaming in another room. Reluctantly getting out of bed, she slowly left the room. Yawning, she looked around the living room, the source of the noise was quickly found. It turned out to be the owner of the house, and Kakashi appeared from unknown where. The second sat on the sofa and watched the guys argue. Deciding not to wake up the dashing while it was quiet, Naruto quietly walked over to the sofa and sat down next to Tobarama. Good morning. Do you happen to know what caused this dispute? The man asked, raising an eyebrow questioningly. Don't pay attention, the deers are scolding, they're just having fun. She answered with a yawn. So they are one of these fashionable ones? Tobarama asked with a devilish smile. I guess so, yesterday we had our first kiss. You should remember the date. She said, laughing. I knew that all Uchihas are a little fashionable. The smile never left the man's lips. Lord, for what kind of good deeds did you give me this wonderful man? You'll ask Oric later. Naruto, who do you like better? Shursui suddenly asked, interrupting Naruto's thoughts about how perfect the second was. He, the girl answered with lightning speed, pointing her finger at Tobaram, causing all three of them to have their jaws drop normally. We lost to a dead, old guy with whom she knew nothing at all. Second Sama, is it really possible that you, asked Kakashi, visibly darkening. You should also thank her for not calling me. The fox laughed, taking control of Naruto's body for a second. Oh well then, thank you very much about the great QB. Shursui said sarcastically, bowing in a playful manner. Eh, I went, 
otherwise Arosanan has probably already disappeared to the baths, at least someone should protect the poor women. Naruto said, getting up from the couch and leaving the house. On the street, she met many Uchiha, who were interested in how that night went. They already managed to enroll you in the Uchiha family registry. Kurama sang sarcastically, openly laughing at the embarrassed girl, after another woman from the clan asked if her lower back hurt. No, this is too much. Who do they take me for? Naruto asked, giving up and using her ration. Once at home, she sighed with relief, but feeling two heavy glances, she tensed up. You can start explaining. Minato said, smiling sweetly. Jiraiya just nodded. About. Arosanan. I'm so glad to see you. Anu, don't change the topic. He answered her. Hmm. I matched a new fashionable couple. Well, they weren't too happy, so I hid with Orochimaru, after which I was captured. So let's take it easy, according to rumors in the villages, these lucky ones were Shursue and Kakashi? Minato asked, wearily massaging his temples and remembering the report of one of the ANBU that his student and his daughter's boyfriend kissed in the middle of Kanoha, not without the help of Naruto, of course. Exactly right. In captivity, I fell asleep because I was tired, but they were already carrying out their mating games. And in the morning, BAM, and they ask who I like better, apparently they didn't share something at night. Well, I answered them honestly. Naruto explained, gesticulating wildly with her hands. And? The man asked in one voice. She said it was second Sama. She answered, shrugging her shoulders and staring at them with a silent question, isn't it obvious? Minato just sighed in relief. By the way, little one, I'm going on a mission here and I'm just thinking about taking on one student. Jiraiya said with a sly smile. I do not even know. Actually, I've already asked to be second Sama student, Naruto said thoughtfully. It's okay, he'll be third. Tobarama said as he entered the room with the three. Oh, what a tempting offer. Perhaps this is for the best, because together it will be easier to help her master the Bija mode. Jiraiya said, smiling good-naturedly. Tobarama. The second introduced himself, extending his hand to Jiraiya. Jiraiya. The man said, shaking his hand. Now may not be the right time, but I have something important to tell you Naruto. For the successful completion of this and many other missions, Naruto Namake Zuzumaki is awarded the title of Jonin. Minato said smiling proudly. I will wear this title with pride. Naruto said smiling happily. Now I am higher in rank than topic. Muhaha. She said, laughing evilly. Perhaps I was a little hasty, Minato said while watching his daughter and laughed lightly. Kushina would probably laugh along with her daughter, scaring the whole village. Commentary on Part 31 And I'm with you again. Azuka-chan is in touch and today we will finally find out whether Tobarama Senju is really a pedophile and the main question of the day is whether Shursui's lower back hurts after a hot night with Kakashi? And what will you answer, our dears? Tobarama, lies and provocation. I can wait a second year. Sure sway, well, you should ask Kakashi. Naruto, so a question from the audience and characters, to dear Azu. Have you given up at all, I write so rarely? Azuka-chan, perhaps. Haha. -ha. When do we go to train? Naruto asked, peering into the teacher's face, mentally noting that all her sensei were extremely similar. All three have ash-colored hair, are all into the hermit's books, and are simply quite beautiful. Arosanan and Tobarama are very similar, don't you think so? You also noticed this. They may be related, but most likely not direct. In about a week, I want to rest a little and collect material for my new book, I hope for your help this time too. The man said slyly, but immediately fell silent when he felt Minato's unkind gaze on him. Haha, I'm just kidding. The hermit laughed nervously, wiping away cold sweat. You're not joking funny, Jiraiya-sensei. Minato said, already regretting his decision to let his daughter go with the teacher. 
suddenly he thought that if Kushina had been here, she would have already safely killed him. It seems this trip will be very interesting. Tobarama said looking at the pale face of Minato, who had just realized the seriousness of the situation. The only thing I ask of you is not to get into trouble, at least not as often as you like to do. Second, all hope is on you, please look after Naruto and Sensei. The man looked pleadingly at the second, boundless hope was visible in his eyes. I will try. So. I have arranged my life, now it's time to think about Sakura and the topic. Naruto said as she clapped her hands to get everyone's attention. You don't have to worry about Sasuke, he has a whole clan of teachers. In particular, Itachi and Curly. Well, Sakura planned to turn to Tsunade to become a medical ninja. Kakashi said calmly, sitting on the windowsill and dangling his legs from it. And I see, you're happy to see how your students have scattered to different corners. I suppose that's all I hoped for. Said the girl, narrowing her eyes slyly. I don't hide this. The best way to live is to be idle. The guy answered, still sitting on the windowsill. Moreover, no one drove them away. Not a bad philosophy, kid. Tobarama said, smiling peacefully, he definitely liked his way of thinking. Minato just smiled condescendingly, realizing that most likely such a life would not be possible for them, after all, they were shinobi. Okay. Since we've decided everything, I guess I'll go. I have to tell the guys that I am now a jonin. The girl sang, already imagining how Sasuke would turn green with anger and began to laugh quietly, which gave everyone in this room goosebumps. Sometimes you scare even me. Can I take this as a compliment? Under frightened glances, the girl left the room and went to the second floor. She's too much like her mother, Minato said with a sigh, covering his eyes with his palm. I'm certainly not an instigator, but this is clearly your character, Minato-sensei, the guy said almost in a whisper, with which everyone in the room silently agreed. It's even worse, at the man's words, everyone fell silent again. Come on Minato, cheer up, but who the hell will scare her? Jiraiya said cheerfully, he was amused by this whole situation. Naruto, meanwhile, had already returned to her room, having taken a shower. Having changed into clean clothes, the girl lay down on the bed, analyzing everything that happened to her during this time. She was distracted from her thoughts by the tapping of fingers on the windowsill, the tapping echoed in the quiet room, creating a simple melody pleasant to the ear. A small smile appeared on Naruto's face, she already knew who the source of the sound was, she didn't need to open her eyes to recognize it. You haven't stood out for a long time. Naruto whispered, enjoying the simple melody. I thought you wouldn't be allowed to look after me anymore. Thanks for your help that time. Rising from the bed, she looked straight at the mask of the ANBU, who did not take his eyes off her. As soon as Naruto fell silent, he took out a small notebook and began to write something. Having finished, he handed the piece of paper to the girl. On a piece of paper, in neat handwriting, there were only two words written, be careful. Every time I am surprised at how beautiful your handwriting is. And thanks for your concern, I'll try. She said, smiling brightly, after her words, the guy in uniform immediately left the room. Hey, he's already gone. Who left? Kakashi asked, unceremoniously entering the room and plopping down on the bed. Do you take lovers to your house while your husband is still alive? Maybe I drive, but when did I manage to get a husband? She asked, frowning and crossing her arms over her chest, carefully squeezing the piece of paper in her hands. You just broke my fragile heart. The guy said, wiping away a non-existent tear. Me and my curls aren't enough for you? Have you decided to seduce someone else? If you continue in the same spirit, I will soon become a widow. She said, smiling slyly. You don't love me at all. The guy continued to speak in the same sad voice. I will die of melancholy, and only the kiss of true love will save me. The girl sighed and walked up to the bed on which Kakashi was lying. Leaning down, she kissed his cheek, removing his mask. Hey, that's a bit of a wrong kiss. Said the guy who didn't expect this a little. Contact Shursway with such requests, 
I think you will gladly fulfill your wish. Naruto sang sarcastically, squatting next to the bed, looking straight into the guy's eyes. Ha, huh, that's not fair. If you seduce, seduce to the end. Or should I show you how to do it? He asked, narrowing his eyes a little, slyly looking straight into the eyes of Naruto, surprised by the serious tone of the guy. A truly devilish smile played on his lips, Naruto could swear that it was with such a smile that the devil seduced people and pushed them into sin. Trying not to look into the guy's eyes, she shifted her gaze to the mole under Kakashi's lips. The devil, he is the devil in the flesh. Naruto decided mentally, embarrassed under the guy's gaze. The blood rushed to the cheeks, and the heart was torn out straight into the hands of this seductive. Even though she thought that she had long been accustomed to his actions, everything turned out to be the opposite. She hadn't even seen half of it, and the realization of this sent chills through her skin and some strange anticipation that came from nowhere. Being in thought, she did not notice how the distance between their faces had decreased to a few millimeters. Now she could feel his uniform and for some reason too loud breathing with her skin, looking into his only visible eye, she felt herself beginning to drown in him and her feelings. Suddenly the swarm of her thoughts froze, and the realization came that she was looking forward to the kiss, absorbing Kakashi's every glance, sigh and movement like a sponge. As if seeing something in her eyes, Kakashi smiled even wider. This is how you need to seduce. He whispered into the lips of the girl to whom his breath seemed like hot lava. Tired of the long wait, she herself gave in, covering his dry, chapped lips, with hers. It was as if fireworks of feelings exploded inside both of them. With his eyes wide open, Kakashi looked at the girl's red face in disbelief, hesitating for just a second, he responded to her hesitant kiss. Naruto acted rather subconsciously, biting the guy's lip and immediately running her tongue over the bite side as if apologizing for the pain caused, hugging his neck, trying to be as close to him as possible. Pulling away from each other, both began to greedily gasp for air. This is how you need to seduce. Naruto whispered, smiling contentedly. Which made Kakashi's eyes widen for the umpteenth time today. You're driving me crazy, the guy said, sighing heavily. But you like it, don't you? She asked, still hugging the guy, touching his forehead with hers. He just smiled contentedly. Now we look more like a young married couple. Naruto-chan. Someone's painfully familiar voice shouted from his feet, opening the door to her room. Raising her head, she noticed Shursui frozen in the doorway. Oops. She thought, looking at the confused face of the guys, but Kakashi's face did not remain that way for long. Surprise was replaced by malice. Why are you smitten by my beauty? Kakashi asked, Naruto meanwhile removed her hands and moved away from the bed. Where did you see the beauty there? Shursui answered him in the same tone. Rising from the bed, the guy stood in front of Naruto, blocking his opponent's view. Where you have yours. Kakashi retorted, putting his mask back on. Naruto ran her eyes from one to the other trying to sort out her feelings. But they were like a ball of tangled threads, only falling more and more into chaos. There were many questions swirling in her little head that she couldn't answer. What have you arranged here, cables? Tobarama asked, following the noise. Now the guy's gazes were aimed at him. The main rival. Get out of here quickly. Thanks to Tobarama, I remembered something. Love is not for me, my goal is to become stronger, destroy Akatsuki, and eventually become the same Hokage as my father and Tobarama. And only then love, she said to herself, after which her mind cleared, and then the solution to this problem came. I'll sort myself out during the journey, and then I'll give them my answer. And in general, I like Tobarama, but I think he can wait until I become Hokage. God, you have women, everything is always too complicated. Kurama muttered, listening to the girl's internal monologue. After the boys and Tobarama left, she breathed a sigh of relief. Plopping down on the bed, she fell asleep in her clothes, with a light heart, thinking that she had decided everything, but she still had a lot of work ahead of her, because it would not be very easy to unravel that tangle of mixed feelings. However, she knew one thing for sure, 
becoming Hokage is what she wants more than anything in the world. The next few days passed slowly in a calm atmosphere, as much as possible, of course, for Naruto. Kakashi did not remind her of that incident, continuing to joke about Jiraiya's books, while managing to quarrel with Shursue. In a series of these calm days, Naruto did not even notice that the last day of their stay in the village had come. As luck would have it, she hadn't seen anyone she knew since the morning, and if she did, they quickly ran away somewhere. And now she sits alone at home in her room and reads another scroll with techniques of the Uzumaki clan. Hey Dobe, what are you doing here? Sasuke asked entering the girl's room through the window. Well, first of all, hello, and secondly, I'm reading. Naruto greeted him, not looking away from the scroll. Leave this piece of paper and come with me quickly. The guy said, taking the scroll from her. Ha. Huh. Okay, but if it won't be for long, I still need to pack my things. Okay. Sasuke said, grabbing her hand and leading her out of the house. Most of the way, they exchanged caustic phrases and jokes, thereby raising their spirits. They headed directly to the house of the head of the Echiha clan. But Naruto didn't pay much attention to it, simply following behind her friend. When they entered the house, she noticed that it was extremely quiet. The house was empty, only the clock ticking, destroying the silence. Ignoring his friend's thoughtfulness, Sasuke continued walking, finally stopping in front of the door to the living room. Come in first. The guy said distantly, giving way to the girl. Not understanding the reason for her friend's strange behavior, she simply opened the door, after which an explosion of firecrackers and greeting cries from friends and acquaintances fell upon her. Congratulations on receiving the rank of Jonin! They shouted together, causing a joyful smile to bloom on Naruto's face. The people gathered in this room were dear to her like no other. The Echiha family, Shursue, Minato, Tobarama, Jiraiya, Tsunade, and Team Seven, these were the people she would miss extremely during her absence. Having accepted congratulations from everyone, the girl sat down with her team. Eh, I'm completely behind you, said Sakura. I'm sure you'll also receive the rank of Chunin very soon. And you will probably be able to get the rank of Jonin before the dobe. Naruto encouraged her, to which Sasuke only snorted. He was dissatisfied with the fact that he was overtaken again and also went to training with the Sanin. I heard you are going to training for a long time. This means that our team will not be able to get together again for a long time. Sakura said, looking at Jiraiya. But you and Sasuke Kuen will work together. Naruto said conspiratorially, smiling slyly when she saw Sakura's dreamy face. No, thank you. I'd better find some Sanin for myself and get rid of him. Why look for him, our miracle, is sitting in the laboratory and interfering with the potions. Naruto said, twirling a glass of juice in her hands. By the way, not a bad idea. The guy said, thinking about the girl's proposal. Itachi will kill me if he finds out that it was I who gave him this idea. Naruto thought, watching the already drunk adults. The evening was filled with love, fun, and something incredibly familiar and warm. Naruto couldn't help but smile while being here, she will definitely remember these moments and they will be with her throughout the entire time until they can see each other. The girl spent the rest of the evening in the company of Itachi, Shursue, and Kakashi, who tried to convince her to stay, but the girl was relentless. While the adults were still drinking, Naruto was already sleeping at home with Sakura, who stayed with her. Tomorrow Naruto had a long journey ahead and farewell to dear people, but today she was just sleeping. A short girl ran along a small path, ignoring the calls behind her. She ran, peering at one point, anticipating a quick meeting with friends and family. Hey, let's calm down a little. At least don't forget to breathe. The fox muttered, still lazily waving his tails. It's just that we haven't seen each other for so long. It's quite natural that I'm so worried. The girl answered, running up to the gate and almost knocking down the gate guards. Running past at the speed of lightning, feeling strong and frequent heartbeats, and how my hands trembled with excitement. Running and looking around the area, she realized that nothing had really changed, everything was the same as two and a half years ago. 
she's probably the only one who's changed here. She grew up, became a real girl, changed her costume to a darker one, although Orange still dominated and saw the girl from the crowd of ordinary Kunoichi. The sweatshirt is half black and half orange, with a dark, unpatterned t-shirt underneath and black shorts underneath. On his feet are the usual dark shinobi sandals. Jiraiya and Tobarama reproached her more than once for her lack of femininity, but still gave her this suit for her birthday, along with rare books, and not a dress and heels, as they wanted. Little one, slow down, otherwise Sakura is trying to catch up with you. Hearing the fox's words, the girl suddenly braked, finally coming out of her thoughts. Naruto. A girl shouted not far away, scaring all of Kanoha with her scream. It seems like they're going to kill me now. What are your bets for? Naruto asked, looking at the approaching girl. When there was only a second left before the girl approached, Naruto quietly closed her eyes expecting a blow, but instead a warm hug followed. Eli caught up with you. Where did you learn to run like that, huh? Sakura asked quietly, hugging her friend, trying to catch her breath from a long run. Actually, I was running to you. Where is this stupid topic, why isn't he with you? The girl asked, looking at her friend, noticing that she had not changed at all, with the exception of Bayakugo's mark on her forehead. Noting that her cherry blossom colored hair has become much longer and is now pulled back into a high ponytail. They evoked admiration inside for their delicate color and length. Well, here's the thing, Sakura began to say, awkwardly looking away. He left the village with Orochimaru. They are training in the land of sound and they will not return soon. He? But I really wanted to show him how much stronger I had become. The Kunoichi said disappointedly, getting out of her friend's embrace. You haven't changed at all. Sakura said happily. To be honest, I was afraid that after so much time you had changed a lot, but you are still the same. Otherwise. Although Toby tried to dress me up like a princess at first, I stood stoically and did not give in. Naruto said proudly, raising her nose to the sky. No, of course, I can wear anything for him, but still, it's not every day to walk like this. As I understand it, your obsession with him did not go away and you gave him a nickname? The girl asked, walking next to her friend. Hey! It wasn't an obsession. Naruto replied, blushing, to which her friend just laughed. Heading towards their home, the girls met familiar Jounin and Chunin. They smiled welcomingly and said hello while the villagers whispered behind them. Cat scratched at the girl's soul. Forgotten memories woke up again in her head, reminding her that everyone here considers her a monster. Except for family and friends. Trying not to show her condition to Sakura, the girl only smiled, answering her questions with jokes. Kurama just muttered something about the stupidity of his vassal and how they weren't worth her worries at all. Approaching the house, Naruto swallowed the lump of excitement that prevented her from breathing. Squeezing the doorknob in her hand, she couldn't bring herself to open it, glaring at it. Sakura just stood nearby and did not rush her. After all, a lot of time had passed since her friend was home, she was unfamiliar with these feelings, but this did not stop her from sympathizing with her teammate. After standing for some time, she finally decided to open the door. The house greeted her with cozy silence and warmth that warmed her soul to the very core. I'm home. Having crossed the threshold, the girl took off her shoes and ran into the living room with a happy smile. Welcome back. The living room greeted her with a loud greeting from many voices. All the people dear to her, with the exception of a few people, were gathered in this small room. Tears welled up in her eyes, but she immediately turned away, quickly wiping them away and smiling from ear to ear, immediately hugging her father. Immediately noting that she is now only half a head shorter than her father. What did Jiraiya feed you to make you grow so tall? Tsunade asked, patting the girl on the head. I didn't even recognize you at first. You have become very beautiful. Shursway said, immediately receiving a glare from Minato. I think I agree with Shursue. Itachi supported his friend, smiling with his signature smile. Hey, don't embarrass the girl. Mikoto threatened, to the quiet laughter of Fugako. 
Shikamaru and Chuji also wanted to come, but, unfortunately, they are on a mission. Sakura replied, placing her hand on her friend's shoulder. And inside the girl everything shook with joy, which made the fox roll his eyes sarcastically. You could have waited for us. Oh, Toby, have you caught up with me yet? Releasing her father from the embrace, the girl looked at the completely unchanged second Hokage. Just because I have more than you doesn't mean I'm slow. Don't be complex, Toby. I love you any. Naruto, let's calm down a little, otherwise Minato will faint. Entering the room, Jiraiya immediately went to Tsunade, taking out a bottle of sake. I missed you, very much. She looked around at everyone present, realizing that she was finally home. Only a few moments passed before everyone found themselves at a small table and the adults were already drinking bottles of sake that Jiraiya had stored. Naruto, how is your correspondence with the Kazakage-san? Sakura's question threw the guy sitting next to him into a stupor. Fine. We learned a lot about each other, it turns out we have quite similar situations. But I was still a little luckier than him. I think I can confidently say that we have become good friends. The girl shared her thoughts, thereby further confusing the Echihas. Hey, Naruchan, you missed me more than this, right? Pointing at Itachi, Shursui smiled, contentedly. He just rolled his eyes. No, I missed everyone equally. I'm worried about something else, where is Kakashi? Naruto asked and looked around the room again. He should have already come, Sakura didn't have time to finish when someone's voice interrupted him from the corridor. Um, I'm late again, Kakashi said, raising his hand to say hello. Naruto immediately jumped up from her seat and ran up to the guy, hugging him. You're late again, she said, burying her face in his green vest. Did you even miss me? Very. I was just on a mission, I had to stay late to pump out the wolf and he almost died of joy, he said, hugging the girl and kissing her on the top of her head. Haha, as I understand it, you had a lot of fun there, she said, laughing. Having sat down in their places, everyone began to vigorously discuss the girl's adventures. Toborama discussed Naruto's skills with Minato, the Echiha couple and the Sanin had already gotten drunk, but nothing made Makoto get drunk. And she sadly drank sake, looking at her sleeping husband. Naruto and Sakura were shaking the bones of everyone in the village, smiling conspiratorially. The guys decided to have a competition to see who gets drunk first. In the end, Itachi won, just as Naruto suspected. She was glad to be home again, where all these people were waiting for her, but somewhere inside, a little worm, fear, began to stir. He went through her entire insides, and suddenly everyone has changed, everyone has their own life into which she does not fit, like an extra piece of a puzzle. However, the warm smiles on the faces of her relatives did not let her go into thoughts. Under the voices and jokes of her family, she unnoticed herself fell asleep on Kakashi's shoulder while he calmly ran through her hair. Sakura sat on her lap, not in a hurry to leave her friend. So, talking with Naruto, she couldn't help but wonder why she treated her so badly at the academy when they first became a team. Thinking about this, she wanted to give her younger self a good kick. But now they have grown up and have not seen each other for two and a half years, both have changed in one way or another. But she still wanted to be close to Naruto, who warmed her with her presence. Perhaps this is exactly what she envied a few years ago. But now she will do everything to help and protect her, perhaps now this sunny girl is much more valuable to her than Sasuke. Perhaps she was so influenced by separation, or by long communication with Sasuke, which helped her realize that he was not at all as ideal as he once seemed. Kakashi's thoughts were in complete chaos. The heart is about to stop with happiness, and the eyes still cannot stop looking at her, sleeping peacefully on his shoulder. The girl grew up and became a real beauty, her long blonde hair was now loose and falling down in soft waves. However, Kakashi was not the only one who could not take his eyes off the unsuspecting girl. Shursue was in a similar state. And now he and Kakashi were thinking about the same thing. You know that you have no chance, right? The second Hokage asked mockingly, turning his attention to himself. 
you're too cruel, don't you think? Shursway asked, leaning on the table. As if we don't know ourselves. There are always chances, even if they are the same height as Shursway. Kakashi didn't miss the chance to tease his opponent. To my great surprise, during Naruto's absence they managed to become quite good friends. Hey! The fact that you are three centimeters taller does not mean anything. He was indignant, getting up from the table. Kami, you're going to lose your dignity here. I mean. Don't say that you and Naruto, Shursue expressed his terrible assumption, putting a small boat to his mouth. I'm resurrected, why would she connect her life with someone like me? He said, causing the guys to breathe a sigh of relief. At least now, when Orochimaru has not yet completed my body. Don't say that we have another opponent, Shursue muttered, laying his head on the table. Don't forget about the Kazakage, he's not a fool either. He still wants to make her his daughter-in-law. Sakura added wood to the fire. And this too. Said Tobarama, and the guys groaned doomedly. The morning started calmly, despite the seal rookery. The Echihas left in the evening, but Sakura and Kakashi stayed for the night, falling asleep in an embrace with Naruto. Minato was sleeping at the table, just like the legendary Sanin. In the morning, early in the morning, everyone was expected to clean up, with the exception of the last trio, as they retreated in all directions. Sakura, not wanting to wake up her friend from the road, decided to clean it herself, but after about 20 minutes Naruto joined her, having woken up due to the lack of a heat source nearby. The morning went as well as possible, the girls were cleaning the house, discussing everything in the world. The second one said something yesterday about Orochimaru working on creating a new body. What does it mean? Sakura asked, collapsing on the sofa next to Naruto and Kakashi, who had not joined in cleaning, despite the fact that he had gotten up quite a long time ago. To be honest, I don't really know myself. The only thing I can say is that Orochimaru has been developing since the beginning of my journey. Naruto answered, chewing on a cookie she found in the kitchen. So, even you don't know anything? Kakashi asked, to which Naruto, with a mouthful of cookies, only nodded. I hope you didn't cheat on your husband? Except with Toby. Naruto said as she swallowed the cookie. I knew he was a pedophile. Purely theoretically, you are also a pedophile, Kakashi-sensei. You only look 19, but you're already over 30, without saying a word, the girls bumped fists, celebrating their victory. They were not allowed to talk for a long time, an ANBU wearing a cat mask appeared in the room. From the sight of which a joyful smile appeared on the girl's face. Hokage-sama wants to see you. He has a task for our team. Eh, I just arrived home, but I'm glad to become a member of the ANBU team again. Naruto said, getting up from the couch. I'll change clothes and arrive at the Hokage's office. After her words, the ANBU left, and silence fell in the room. It looks like I have to leave you again. The girl smiled guiltily and went up to the second floor. The room greeted her clean and cool. She looked like the girl had not left her for two whole years. Having changed into the uniform left by the ANBU, the girl went to the Hokage's office. The familiar, almost native fox mask, was present on the face. She understood that the task was urgent, but she missed home so much. And now, having finally returned, she will go on a mission again. All members of her team gathered in the Hokage's office, and from the atmosphere, the girl realized that everything was very bad. Kitsune, your squad has been entrusted with the task of rescuing Gara, who was kidnapped on the eve of his becoming Kazakage. Minato said with a serious face. You can go on a mission in civilian clothes, since the ANBU disguise may give the Kazakage some not very pleasant thoughts. I am sending you as a detachment of Jonin. We won't disappoint you. Naruto said as she got down on one knee and accepted the scroll with the details of the task. Kakashi, Sakura, and the others will follow. Sakura is a medic, you might need her help. Minato said without relaxing for a minute. Fine. You can go. We'll meet as usual. Naruto said and her comrades left the room. 
She of course wanted to talk to them, because she really missed them during her absence. But now her heart was full of worries about a friend with a similar fate. Taking off the mask, he and his father sighed at the same time. I'll move out as soon as possible. Gara managed to become a dear friend to me, and if I understood everything correctly, he was kidnapped by that group. Yes, that's it, that's why I'm in such a hurry. Having said, Minato lowered his head onto his folded hands. The only strange thing is that you send me there so easily. You would go there yourself if you found out. It is better for you to be under the reliable protection and supervision of ANBU than to go on your own. You're absolutely right. Before I leave, I want to ask about that request. I've already taken care of this. And I will leave one of them in your care. I left the rest of the guys from Root ANBU, but this one turned out to be in even worse condition than the rest. I think only you can help here. He will become member of team number 7, take care of him. Minato explained, smiling warmly. Before leaving on the trip, the girl asked her father to try to disband the ANBU. Thank you. The girl shouted, hugging her father, remembering that silent Umbu root, in the depths of her heart she hoped that he would be the one who would come to her. The father kept silent about the fact that the boy himself asked him to allow him to protect Naruto. Having released her father, she went home to pack her things and change clothes. Having finished getting ready, she went to the meeting place. This is such an open end to the story. Thank you for being with me until the end of the story.